he talks to me. Spirit, hear the voice of my heart and pray to the Father. Spirit, pray. Spirit, pray. Hey, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome. It's a blessed day. The Bible says that this is the day the Lord has made. And we will rejoice and be glad in it. Today is a good news talk show with God's servant Eric Obey. And I cannot wait. I cannot wait. I'm so excited. So while you are online, make sure you are sharing this on your page. Let God use your platform to be a blessing to somebody. We can't be friends with everyone on our platform. Facebook has restricted us to have the maximum number of 5,000. So my, my private uh, personal page is already over. I can accept friends. That's why we have created this page, Good News Studios TV. So make sure that um, you are following, like the page, and share. There is nothing wrong with sharing the gospel. All right? If you can't come to this studio, use your Facebook to share the gospel so somebody can be blessed. So today, our discussion, the topic today is salvation. Salvation. So while I'm watching some people, I'm going to read, let your comments keep coming in. Also, if you have any question, the man of God is here to um, help for all of us to answer and then have an understanding. All right. So God's servant, Eric Obey. Welcome to Good News Talk Show. Thank you, Radia Jabai. How are you? Ah, by the grace of God, we are doing well. <laughs> we are doing our best. Awesome, awesome, awesome. We want, I want to thank you so much for um, coming on this show. I know God is going to use you. God has been using you. I've been following you, your messages, <laughs> and it's so powerful. Time, it's so Lord. powerful. Now, before we start, is there anything you want to say to the people before we start? Well, I just want to say thank you, everyone, for your time. Uh, thank you, my audience, my followers. I want to say a big thank you to Valerie. And thank you for everyone who has been supportive so far as uh, this ministry is concerned, word and spirit. And as well, my wife, um, Helena Naokaile, thank you for your support and the children as well. Awesome. Awesome, 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 awesome. We greet all of you. <laughs> so I, I realized it's it because of Lee that I, I, I got connected with you. Exactly. How, how did that happen? <laughs> I think one day, um, well, Lily kind of uh, invited me on one of um, her, I think, third month, no, third week of every month. She kind of does the kind of um, talk Bible discussion. So okay. I got an opportunity to um, I mean, be um, her guest. And it was bad. I mean, it was so nice by the grace of God, you know, we were able to do by the help of the Holy Spirit what God wanted people to hear at that time. So since then, I think I was kind of discussing something about um, how to help spread the gospel. And the idea of Randy Ajima came into the scene. But before I've been uh, kind of playing your music, you know, on Facebook, when I wow. would pray, uh, most of the times I may use your uh, some of your worship songs to pray. Yeah, so... Then I said, wow, that's, that's so nice. So immediately she brought the idea of a friend who is trying to set up this kind of platform where uh, the word of God can also be spread. I said, well, it's an opportunity. So let me get in touch. So that's how I came into contact with you, Randy. But uh, uh, for some reason, I've been following you from afar. Maybe you don't know. Wow, wow, <laughs> I've been wow, listening wow. to your song, praying after. And uh, I thank God for your life, you know, for how, you know, how far the Lord is using you you know, in that platform. So God bless you. Amen. 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 Lily, God bless you for this divine connection. So how did you, how did you, how, how did you find about the worship songs about Randy Ajima? Oh my goodness. I mean, <laughs> those hearing me, I mean, wherever you are, you just go on YouTube and just type in Randy Ajima. The worship songs are so nice. I remember, I think one day I just went there and I decided to just pick one of your songs. I was praying and I immediately I sent to a friend. She's in Maryland. And I said, have you checked out this guy? I remember recently we went to a, a church gathering. And I was speaking to one of our, my friends. And I said, have you checked this guy? There's this guy called Randy Ajiman. I mean, the guy has, I mean, his style of worship is different. I'm trying to find out how he does it. But 
is kind of extraordinary. So I just gave your name to him to kind of check you out. So uh, in a small way, we're also marketing or spreading <laughs> your music. You are doing such a wonderful work. Thank you so <laughs> much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Your, the show that you do is Word and the Spirit. That's right. Word and the Spirit. That's right. And I told you I'm going to be listening to you. And That's right. I, I like content. Mm -hmm. You see, the reason God gave me this vision exactly. is not to showcase anything. Okay. It's a burden on me. Oh, man. Okay. Like, sometimes when I come here and I'm about to talk, I get scared. Because mm. if you're not careful, you must, you might mislead some people. That's right. So I get nervous. Mm -hmm. And I always pray for God to help me to say the right things I'm supposed to say. Amen. Or speak through me. Exactly. Do you understand that? Exactly. So the platform is not created because... Um, I'm trying to show off for anything. Mm -hmm. If I want to show off, that we can do that in the world. <laughs> you can go and show off. Exactly. Now, when it comes to the gospel, it's about Him. Mm. It's not about us. Amen. That's why we have music ministry mm -hmm. and music industry. Mm -hmm. Do you understand that? Yeah. So, um, the, 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 the platform God has given me is not about an industry, it's a ministry. Amen. If you don't understand this too, mm -hmm. you might be confused. Mm. Because when it's a ministry, it's about him. Mm. When it's an industry, it's about the artist. Amen. Do you understand that? So um, that's why this platform is here. Now, why did you choose that topic, Word and the Spirit, before we dive into our... Well, the, the reason why I choose Word and Spirit is that, that if you look at the Word itself, the Bible says that for everything shall pass away. But his word will forever remain. Mm -hmm. If you read the book of John chapter 1 verse 1, it says that in the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. So the intent, that is the logos. The logos, the intent, the express image of God started with the word. Hallelujah. Wow. So everything is about the word. If you want your marriage to be successful, it's about the word. Mm -hmm. If you, anything that you can think about. It's in the word. If you read the book of Proverbs chapter 4, yes. uh, the wisest man on this earth, Proverbs, uh, Solomon, mm -hmm. I mean, he was advising his son and he said, this word, make sure that you take it daily, daily. Ish. So your life, you cannot do anything without the word. And if you like, the word is also the spirit. Mm -hmm. Because if you read the verse 14 of John chapter 1, it mm -hmm. says that, and the word became flesh. And we beheld the glory, wow. the glory of the only begotten of the Father. So the word now became flesh, and the flesh, which is Christ, then in a different dispensation, now the flesh is now the spirit. My so it's God. like the word and the spirit. That is why I chose uh, that kind of uh, a program, the name of the program, wow. by courtesy of my boss, K.B. Stein. Wow, <laughs> K.B. Stein. God bless you so much. Amen. God bless you. See that um, he's also doing an awesome work. And that's this um, how the kingdom is supposed to be. Amen. We help ourselves. That's right. Because we are all soldiers of the Lord. Amen. We don't leave anybody behind. That's right. So that's all the kingdom is about. Amen. Now, um, it's very real. Mm -hmm. I mean, real this age mm -hmm. to really find people talking about salvation. Mm. Because when you look at it, um, this time, especially our, 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 um, our generation mm -hmm. is kind of real to really hear about salvation, you know. So why, why do you preach salvation? Why? Well, the reason why I chose salvation is that you know the reason why I am a born again Christian mm -hmm. is because of the word salvation that we all read in the Bible. That's right, and you realize that. I mean, uh, every believer, irrespective of who you are, mm -hmm. the salvation message needs to be preached. Mm -hmm. In fact, our calling is about the salvation mm -hmm. message. Mm -hmm. If you read the book of um, Acts chapter 20, I like reading scriptures for the sake of our viewers. I like reading scriptures because I believe that when it comes to the salvation message, yes. I mean, you need to, I mean, rightly define the word of truth. That's right, let's go. Apostle Paul told his son, in the ministry, Timothy said that steady to show thy self approved unto God first and foremost. Mm. And he said that a workman needed not to be ashamed, mm. rightly dividing the word of truth. So wow. if you read the book of Acts chapter 20, reading from the verse 24, he says that this is Paul speaking. He said that, but none of these things move me, mm. 
nor do I count myself dear to myself, wow. so that I may finish my race with joy. And the ministry which I receive from the Lord Jesus to testify to the gospel of the grace of God. Wow, wow. So when you talk about ministry, everybody has been called into a ministry of reconciliation. Mm. According to 2 Corinthians chapter 5, five verse uh, 18, 20, 20 yes. there about it. It says yes. that everybody has been called into the ministry of ministry. Wow. reconciliation. Wow. So Paul is saying that he received this ministry from God to testify of the grace of God. So the grace of God is the message about salvation. Wow. And the salvation is simply because Christ came, he died, he was buried, and he resurrected. So out of his resurrection, created a new man in Christ. Mm. That is why I believe I've been personally called. In fact, every believer, every believer, the qualification of you being in the ministry is the fact that you are born again. So once you are born again, you have been given the ministry of reconciliation to preach about the gospel, which is the salvation message. Wow. wow. <laughs> that is so powerful. Once you are born again, you have been given the mandate That's right. to preach the gospel of salvation. Amen. Now, what is salvation? Okay. What, so, is, what is salvation? Because everybody is talking about salvation, salvation, salvation. What is really salvation? Okay. So, you know, salvation, the Greek word for salvation is soteria. That's right. Uh, which means it is spiritual and eternal deliverance mm. of mankind, you know, through Jesus Christ or via the blood of Jesus Christ. That's powerful. So if you look at what I said by explaining or describing, because I don't want to use the word defining, because yes. the word of God it's not a textbook. That's right. You don't define, define. it. You know, it's not a science book mm -hmm. where we define mass or volume, you know. That's right. So the description of salvation is spiritual, eternal, all deliverance That's right. of mankind from bondage mm -hmm. by the death of Christ. That's Hallelujah. Right. Now, if you realize what I just said by way of explaining what salvation is, I made mention of specific keywords. Like spiritual, spiritual, like eternal. eternal. Now I also talk about liberation, liberation. or deliverance of mankind from bondage. Wow! If you look at all the things that I just said, so you know, salvation it is spiritual. It's not. It's, it's not something God. physical. Also, we are saying that it is eternal, which is means it's not temporal. And we are saying that we have been delivered mm. from what? We have been delivered from bondage. That is what salvation is. So the Greek word is soteria. Wow. Wow. That's so amazing. And 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 uh, it also means that being free mm. from both spiritual and physical circumstances. Mm. That's right. You know, so salvation also um, implies peace. Mm -hmm. It comes with prosperity. Exactly. It's a package. It's a package. It's just like um it's encapsulated with everything mankind needs. Exactly. So when we say you are saved, it means that anything that was following you spiritually, physically, that was going to hurt you eternally, mm -hmm. Jesus' blood is so powerful oh, to Jesus. redeem you from all those things. Oh, Jesus. Oh, this is, Jesus. This is so powerful. Oh, Jesus. So, so why would somebody want to walk around mm -hmm. and you only want to give your life to this Jesus? That's correct. Let's go to the scriptures. Whatever you want to now teach. Okay. Let's see. So now, if you look at it, then let's ask ourselves, because it's like salvation. Now, let's look into the Bible mm -hmm. and look at 1 Corinthians chapter 15. The reason why uh, I want us to refer to the Bible is that, I mean, one day I went to a friend mm -hmm. and uh, I went to talk to him. And when I went there, Randy, this guy was crying. And I asked him, what is wrong with you? And he said he doesn't believe that he's born again. And ask him, what is the problem? I mean, what is wrong? Huh. Would, would, would you not believe that you are born again? Mm. So when I went back home, Randy, I sat down for so many minutes and I began to think about this. Because it was very emotional. Yes. Because the question is, how can you be born again, then sit down and have an afterthought, whether you are born again or not? He's not sure. He's not sure. Good. 
So which means that everyone who is born again must be sure that he's born again. Listen, hold on for a second. Listen, this is so, a lot of people are here. And a lot of people are at this point of their lives that they, they are not sure of their salvation. And I'm so glad you brought this thing up. Because mm -hmm. I believe it's a spiritual experience that everybody has to encounter and exactly. answer that question. Exactly. I remember recently I told a friend, I said, now I can tell myself that if anything happens to my life, I will make it. Exactly. That's very good. So until you're able to look at yourself. Exactly. And say, if Jesus comes today, uh -huh. the devil has nothing in me. Perfect. Until you are sure. You don't have God. that in assurance. Exactly. But the Bible says the spirit bears witness of oh, spirit. Oh, my If goodness. you cannot say that if Jesus ha comes today, whether through accident, whatever means death happens, I will make it. Then you're not born again. Not exactly. Born again. So the, the question is, you see, when it comes to born again, Okay, mm. this, you see, this is how I always put it because not any other message which is preached from the uh, pulpit is the gospel message. Wow. So, the question is for one to be born again, then you might have heard the gospel message. Yes, so the question is, what is then the gospel message? Mm. If you read uh, first Corinthians chapter 15, reading from the verse 1 to 4, mm -hmm. Paul said this to the church, he said that, Moreover, brethren. I declare to you the gospel mm -hmm. which I preach to you, mm -hmm. which also ye receive, mm. in which ye stand. Ye stand. Now look at the verse. To say that by which also ye are saved. Mm. Then he continues to say that if you hold fast that word which I preach to you, unless you believe in vain. And look at the verse wow. three. For I delivered to you first of all that which I received that Christ died. For our sins, according to the scriptures, and he was buried, and that he rose again the third day, according to the scriptures. Mm. So when it comes to the gospel message, My God. it is in such men. Christ died for you. Christ was buried. Christ was resurrected on the third day. So if you had this message of the gospel, yes, then and you accepted it, you believe it. Then you are born again. Hallelujah. Oh, oh, oh. This is too much. This is too much. This is too much. Thank you for that definition and also backing up the scriptures. So guys, make sure you are taking down the scriptures. And then when you go, you go and set it. Acts 17 verse 11. Instead of the Bereans, oh, they, good. they accepted the scriptures with all the fullness of readiness of their hearts. Mm -hmm. And then whenever they go home, they set it to make sure whatever the things Paul taught them were true. So there's nothing wrong with searching the scriptures. Search it, and then when you go, make sure you, you, Jesus, is set the scriptures mm. because what they, they talk of me. Oh, Jesus. You are mandated as a child of God to set the scriptures mm. because when you set it, you find truth. That's right. You don't live on hearsays. Mm -hmm. So now the man of God is teaching salvation. Some of you who are not sure, that's, that, that statement he made is so scary. Mm -hmm. That uh, someone that has given his life to Jesus Christ, all of a sudden, a thought came to his mind, and, and he's like, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if I'm really born again if or not. If I'm really born again or not. <laughs> you see the whole thing. So he was just crying. So the question is, now we are talking about deliverance. Because mm -hmm. the, from the beginning, I explained that salvation is spiritual and eternal My deliverance. God. Now, let's look at it very well. So the question is, what have we been delivered from? Talk to me. What have we been saved from? Mm. Now, if you read the book of uh, John chapter 5, verse John chapter 24. John 5, verse 24. John chapter 5, verse 24. It says that, Verily, verily, I say unto you, mm. He that heareth my word, yes. and believe on him that sent me, hath everlasting life. Wow. And shall not come into condemnation, but pass from death unto life. So, when you hear the gospel message, and you believe, the key word is you believe. Because, you see, when the word of God is preached, <laughs> you see, I love it you. can be preached, but you haven't believed. That is why John 3.16 says that, For God so loved the world, yes. that he gave his only begotten son, That's right. that whosoever believe. Now, the Greek meaning of the word believe means to rely upon, mm -hmm. to be dependent on message. Oh my God. So once you believe, then you have received because it can be preached. Yes. Then the continuation of the verse said that if you don't believe, 
Then, then, so, so, exactly. Oh, so once you believe, then now you have been moved from judgment into the life. Now, let, let me read um, this script, uh, Go ahead. this version of what you just read. Okay, cool. Um, it says that I speak to you eternal truth. Oh, Jesus. If you embrace my message oh, goodness. and believe in the one who sent me, oh, Jesus. you will never face condemnation. Mm. For in me, you have already passed from the realm of death into the realm of eternal life. Hallelujah. Is so powerful. I mean, look at this uh, scripture too. Let's look, look at uh, the book of Mark chapter 16. Mark chapter 16. This was when Jesus Christ was sending forth his uh, disciples. Mm. Chapter 16 verses 15. He said that, and he said to them, Go into all the world and preach the gospel mm. of to every creature. The verse 16. He who believes and is baptized, he who believes, which means that not everybody would believe. Oh. Or in the first place, when the, 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 the message is preached, nobody, not everybody believes it. Believes it. But he said that whoever believes it is baptized will be saved but he who does not believe mm. will be condemned mm. hallelujah yes. so which means that as much as the gospel message is it's believed, believed. Is, is preached mm -hmm. it is also on the recipients to believe the gospel my goodness hallelujah my goodness. now if you look at the word receive mm. the greek word of receive means lambano lambano, lambano that's right. which that it is an active word that's which right. that it causes you to take action that's right. by the help of the holy spirit mm -hmm. when the word of god is being mm -hmm. preached so we are saying that every believer once you hear the gospel yes. message one you are delivered first of all from judgment mm. you are delivered from ju judgment now if then again now salvation is this way once you are delivered from judgment now all your sins have been forgiven. forgiven. You see, there are certain things which we need to understand when it comes to our salvation. Mm -hmm. There are certain things that is instant. Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. It said that if any man be in Christ, if any man be in Christ, the key word is in Christ. First of all, it said that he is a new creature. Oh my god. Now, the key word in the scripture is new. Mm. The key is the Greek word for new is kainos, mm. which means that you are of a different kind. This is not rebranded. Mm. This mm. is not as if I've gone to Walmart mm. and I've gone to uh, buy a refurbished computer. This is too good. This is completely new. My God. Then it goes further to say that all things are passed away. Then he says that behold, yes. all things are new. My God. Hallelujah. My God. So which means that any man who is born again in Christ now the face of the past are now passed away you see i, I, I like um i like that uh, that that scripture that you just quoted mm -hmm. that if you are in christ in christ you is exactly <laughs> <laughs> not you are going to be when you first exactly or when 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 you try to be exactly you is that's exactly. not my version exactly the person is it's a statement of fact uh -huh. it's a declaration of the almighty god that so far as you enter christ exactly you is exactly. a new creation exactly it does not matter what was following you exactly what what kind of family we were born into oh my goodness so i like the definition you gave to my good area so terrier that's exactly. spiritual exactly physical antenna exactly and it's when somebody gives their life to jesus christ my goodness the person is automatically oh jesus now the part i like is the behold mm. you see use the greek word i do yeah, exactly. i do me to see with your spiritual eye my goodness that be all things have become new teach me it says that they are new mm. you see this is what we need to understand so far as our salvation is concerned My God. now you are a new man because of christ which means Jesus. that the new man in christ cannot resist oh sorry cannot exist outside christ you ah. are whoever you are as a believer because christ died on the cross he shed his blood for you to have salvation that statement say that you the new man cannot what the new man <laughs> cannot exist without christ you cannot exist outside christ which means that your totality and who you are is because of christ so, so which means uh, you depend on him that is why uh the, the book of john chapter 3 verse 16 said that for god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son 
that whosoever believeth, the key word believeth, the Greek meaning of the word believeth is rely. You depend on him. So which means that once you receive Christ as your Lord and personal Savior, he is your total dependent. Powerful. Your thinking is about him. Everything you do is about him. That is why Paul says something in the book of Galatians chapter 2 verse 20. He said that for I have been crucified with Christ. He said it is called law of identification. Mm -hmm. And he said that it is not I that I live, but it is Christ that lives in me. And the life that I live in the flesh, mm -hmm. it is not because I live, but I live through Christ. This is the law of identification. This is knowing who you are in Christ. Hallelujah. Wow. So now, Randy, when any time it comes to salvation, this is what I want viewers or listeners to understand. Now, let's open our Bible and look at Romans chapter 5 mm. and look at something. Romans 5. Romans chapter 5. I was uh, having some teaching or some discussion and I was talking about the faces of salvation. Now, the reason why my friend, the guy that I visited was crying was because of this reason. Teach now, us. Teach us. now, one thing that we need to understand is that every man, the component of every man, if you read the book of First Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 23, mm -hmm. Man, you are a spirit. That's right. You have a soul mm -hmm. and you live in a body. This is what we need to understand when it comes to our salvation. Now, the question is, what is the application of this that I've said when it comes to our salvation? Okay. Man, you are a spirit. You have a soul. You live in a body. Now, because you are a spirit, whenever you receive Christ as your Lord and personal Savior, what happens to you first and foremost is that your spirit becomes regenerated. Regenerated. Titus chapter 3 verse 5. He said that once we hear the gospel, yes. our spirit becomes regenerated. My God. Once your spirit becomes regenerated, immediately you are born again. My God. And that is the greatest miracle that has ever happened yes. on this earth. Yes. The creation of the new man in Christ oh, is the God. greatest miracle. My God. Why am I saying it's the greatest miracle? Because every miracle that Christ did was visible. Mm. When Lazarus died, and he was brought back to the, uh, to life. We all saw it. When he turned water into wine, we all saw it. But when it comes to the new creation mm. of man, yes, it is a spiritual. It is something not physical. Hallelujah. Yes. So what happened is that now, when you receive Christ as your Lord and personal Savior, your spirit, which is in you, becomes recreated. What about your mind? Okay. Now, your soul also has three components. <laughs> your soul is made up of your mind. Your mind. It is made up of your will. Your will and it's made emotion. up of your emotion. That's right. That is correct. That's right. So these are the three components mm -hmm. when it comes to now your soul. Now, James said something. Now let me go back to the scripture which I was about to read. Let's do this. Exactly. Mm. Now let's go to the book of Romans. And look at the verse. Romans. Romans chapter 5. Romans and, chapter 5. Romans chapter 5. And let's look at the verse. Even 9 and 10 is okay for me. Romans chapter 5, mm. verses 9 and 10. Look at something. Now, it says that much more. Much more. When is it much more than having now been justified by his blood, we have, we have, we, we shall be saved from wrath through him. Nice. Look at the verse 10. For if when we were enemies we were reconciled mm. so that is why your spirit becomes recreated that's right now it is a reconciled to go through the death of his son now look at the, the continual verse much more having reconciled we shall be saved by his life now whenever we are reading the bible we have something called gospel tenses mm. this is very important now look at the the, the ending person that we shall be saved by his life Wow. But if you start from the beginning scripture, it yes. says that we are saved mm -hmm. in the past tense. Mm -hmm. S A V E D. That's right. It said that we have been reconciled. Sound. Thank you. Reconciled. That's thank right. you. By the death of his son. That's right. So that is where our spirit becomes recreated, becomes mm -hmm. born again. Yes. Now it continues to say that much more, much more. which means that in addition, in addition to, this, to this, we shall be saved by his life. How can I be saved and then I shall be saved? Again? Exactly. So that is how salvation is. So this is how it implies. Now, because this mind, okay, because of this mind, my God, exactly. Now your mind is corrupted. Your mind, because of your old nature, mm. from your, your 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 way of life. That's right. Now your old life. So now your mind has to keep on under the subject of the word of God. 
Hallelujah. That's right. So James chapter 1, verses 21, this is what he says. Mm -hmm. He says that when we hear the engrafted word, word of God, we shall be saved. Mm. If in the book of uh, uh, um, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 16, mm -hmm. it says that for our mind is to be renewed, renewed day really. by day. That's right. So which means that when it comes to your mind, your soul, what is made up of your mind, That's right. what is made up of your will, what is made up of your emotions, emotions it is a continual process, process, continual process, continual process. Why? Because Christ becomes to live in you the life that you are living, as Paul said in Galatians chapter 2 verse 20, yes. so for the life that I live in the flesh, That's right. it is not my life, but it is Christ who lives through me. Wow. <laughs> Does it make sense? It makes so sense. Christ is now living in you. Christ is now shaping your life. That's Christ right. is now molding you. Mm. So realize that when in those days, mm. when you used to do certain things, now automatically you see it doesn't stop all of a sudden. No, 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 no. no, no. Gradually. That's right. Gradually. That's right. Gradually. As you hear the word of God, as you feed on the word of God, as you study the word of God, then gradually by the help of the Holy Spirit, mm. now what happens is that now certain things which you were struggling with Wait. in the past. So if it was fornication, mm -hmm. immediately you give your life to Christ yes. and you are born again. Yes. You are saved. That's period. Right. That's right. Now, as time goes on, as you hear the word of God gradually, then it begins to feed on your mind. Mm. Then you begin to drop that fornication. That's right. Then you begin to drop that stealing. That's then right. you begin to drop that gossiping. That's right. You begin to drop them by and by, mm. by and by. Mm. So the key word is that once you receive Christ as your Lord and personal Savior, you desire the sincere milk of the word. That's what Peter said. That's right. He said that as newborn babies, babies desire. you have to desire the sincere milk of the word. So hold the on for a second. Uh -huh. That means that now we are talking about service. Guys, make sure you share this on your page so that it blesses someone. The man of God is explaining so many things here. Some of you, I believe that if you have any questions, you can comment it. I'll read it. All right. I'm seeing that. Um, uh, my mom is watching. Uh, uh, lady says, God bless you both. Insightful. Um, many people unsure of, or certain if they will make it to heaven. I'm seeing Daniel Chase is powerful, more great. And Solo say, Solo says, word. All right. So if you are born again, then you give your life to Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. You are automatically saved. You are born again. I think the problem is the, the acts of the flesh. Exactly. That's why it makes people a little bit confused. Exactly. Because they feel like because their spirit is born again. If I'm born again, how come I'm still doing these things? That is why my friend was crying. Right? <laughs> because that was why he was crying. Because he realized that, you see, now the flesh and the spirit, in the book of Galatians, mm -hmm. chapter 5, says that they are at war. You see, they yes. are competing. They are competing. They are at war. Yes. So what it means is that that is why Peter said that once you are born again, mm. you don't stay there. Mm. You have to desire. Yes. It's like, let's say, going to buy a computer. Yes. Fresh. Mm -hmm. It has nothing on it. You have to come and install Windows. You have to come and install this. Yes. The installation in that setting is where you have to study the Word of God. Oh. Then again, remember the scripture that I quoted. Yes. Peter said, desire the sincere milk of the Word. Which means that if Peter should say desire the sincere milk of the Word, which means that there are other words which are not word. sincere. That's right. Which means that there are other words which are not, not good. Not good. Sincere. Sincere. Which means that a good nutritious food. My God. My God. <laughs> Listen, so many revelations is going on my today goodness. and I'm getting blessed by the man of God. I'm seeing my brother uh, Derek Daniel Doku. Hey, God bless you, man of God. It's an awesome. Next time you're going to be my guest. You know I got you. You're going to be here. And you don't come on this platform without being prepared. <laughs> so this is what the problem is. Now, when you become born again, mm -hmm. it is your duty. I like the word Peter said. He said desire. Desire. You see, you can never say I want to eat McDonald's if you've not tasted it before. That's right. You will never desire something you've not, you've not tasted before. That's it. If I've never tasted rice, I cannot sit there and say, oh, today I would like to eat rice. That's right. So he said, desire. Desire means you have to create it. You yes. have to want to go after this thing. Exactly. So if you're struggling with your salvation, yes, first of all, you have to understand that you are saved already. Exactly. The day you gave your life to Jesus Christ as your life, I'm um, your Lord and personal Savior. Uh -huh. You are saved. Exactly. But don't think that the body knows salvation. Exactly. <laughs> That's what the man of God is teaching, that your body... Okay, it's made of three components. You have 
spirit, soul, and body. Mm -hmm. All right, and then your mind has three components too. Exactly. Okay, and that's why the Bible says what? Desire the word of the word of God because it is the way. It's not saying why we should receive the word of God and grafted word of God, which is able the to book. save. Exactly. That is the word has an ability. Exactly. It has in, it's an embedded ability that is the key. to deliver you. That is so the if you're struggling in a certain area, that's making you confused. Exactly. I mean, to, uh, question your salvation. Exactly. What you need is the word. Is the word. That is good. That is exactly what you have said, Randy. So as you now study the word of God, then gradually, 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 by the help of the Holy Spirit. Mm. Because don't forget from the beginning, we said that, you see, once you receive Christ as your Lord and personal Savior, the Holy Spirit comes to dwell in you. If you read the book of uh, Ephesians chapter 1, verse 13, That's right. it says that after you have received the gospel message, mm -hmm. you are being sealed. Sealed, sealed with the Holy Spirit. Now the Holy Spirit comes to live in you. Now the Holy Spirit begins to radiate through you. Mm. The Holy Spirit begins to shape you. My the God. Holy Spirit begins to mold you. Mm. So we are talking about the three phases of salvation. Wow. We are saying that one, once you receive the gospel message and you become born again, you are saved. You are saved. Now there is the ongoing work of the Holy Spirit. Ongoing. Ongoing. Ongoing work of the Holy Spirit. That is why you have to desire now the gospel message uh, so that the, the word of god the, the key with the, I like, is i like what you are where you are emphasizing the sincere work of the word now what about the body the question is what about the body mm -hmm. now this body would be saved when christ come mm. if you read the book of uh first corinthians chapter uh 15 let me read a scripture see is the reason why i like quoting the scriptures is that when it comes it's, to it's salvation important. message uh is it this my personal belief you see, you have to make sure that the word of God is rightly, I mean, I mean divided. divided. You see, and when it comes to Bible studies, we have to look at it, you know, from the scriptural or the doctrinal point of view. That's right. The word of God must be rightly divided. We have to do exegesis on the word of God. Yes. What I mean by exegesis is that allow the scriptures that to explain, explain itself. itself. Uh -huh. Don't do don't, don't exegesis. Defend, exactly. Don't defend a lion. <laughs> yes. You don't do exegesis. Exegesis right. is that well, it's like you sit down and you say what you think is right. No. That's right. But the, the word is, what does the word of God mm. say when it comes to that? So let's look at uh, what about the body? The now, body. I said that salvation is in three phases. Okay. One, your spirit is saved. Is saved. Now, when you this, give your life to so, Jesus. When you, correct. Now, this mind mm. now is the ongoing work of the Holy Spirit. And we are saying that this body shall be saved at the second coming of Christ. Now, if you read the book of um, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, read it from the verse 15. Somebody should be typing the, uh, the scriptures. You know, <laughs> I, I see my mom. My mom, my mom said, God bless you, man of God. Amen. She, she's, she's getting blessed. I'm seeing golden brown. Uh, a lot of people are following us, and I know all of you are getting blessed. Listen, we are, we are uh, as Antifa we are using the word. The word of God is medicinal. <laughs> to, to treat ourselves today. Amen. Okay, so let's go on. Let's go. So if we read first uh, Corinthians chapter 15, verses 53, it said that for this corruptible must put on incorruptible. This corruptible is this body. In another verse, it says that for this mortal Aye. must receive the immortal. Mm. Okay, now it said that must receive the incorruptible, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible has put on incorruptible and this mortal has put on immortality, then shall be brought and passed through, as it is written, death is swallowed up in victory. victory. So what this means is that when Christ comes for the second time, mm -hmm. no, you cannot live in heaven yeah. with, this, with, this, yeah. with this body. So what means that this body, which is mortal, has to be converted mm. to, Im to, 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 to immortality. Or immortality. Yes. But you see, Randy, let me shock you with this scripture. Shock me. Now, I can tell you for now that the power, the power which is able to change this mort 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 uh, mort mortal body to yes. immortality is already in you. I love this. <laughs> it's already in you. I, I love this. The power, the power which is able to transform, exactly, metamorphose like, your body. Exactly. I like what you said. Spiritual being. Exactly. It's already inside of it's you. It's already inside of you God. as a child of God. That is the Holy Spirit. That is the power. You read the book of Romans chapter 8. Read it from the verse 11. 
Look at what it says. Let me start even reading from the verse 10. It said that, and if Christ is in you, the body is dead because of sin. But the spirit is life because of righteousness. Look at the verse 11. Yes. But if the spirit of him who raised yes. Jesus from the yes. dead dwells in you, you. Listen, there is no other power to raise Christ from the dead. Mm. He said that if that spirit raised Jesus from the dead is in you, <laughs> He who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your immortal. Mm. Sorry, for, uh, your to your mortal. Through his spirit who dwells in you. So the question is, now we are all waiting for the second coming of Christ. Oh, better still. We are all waiting for the rapture. But let me say something when it comes to the rapture. <laughs> you see, if you read the Bible, there is nowhere in the Bible which, is, which has the word rapture. Mm -hmm. Rapture is a description of an event. That's right. Okay, mm -hmm. so if you read about you will see rapture. Yes, but it is just a description of of an event. That is what I read in First Corinthians chapter fifty three. Yes. So it is saying that this mortal, this corruptible, mm -hmm. now shall be changed into incorruptible. incorruptible. But what is going to help it do that is the Holy Spirit, the Holy and what is already in you. That is why we need to understand that the believer in Christ, you carry a missile. You carry a supernatural missile, you carry a spiritual oh, Shani, missile that is able to bombard and destroy the demonic forces. Mm. Mm. It's a missile. Wow. It's a missile. Wow. My that God. spirit is already in you. You see, that is why I always say this in my, in my, in my, in my remarks. I said that your inability to know who you are in Christ gives you room for other people to define you. That's right. Because it's like you don't know who you are. Now, because you don't know the, carry, the kind of power, the kind of energy that you have, that is in you, <laughs> my goodness, anybody comes around and talks to you anyhow. But true. if you know the kind of power, power you carry, oh my, you see, the, the scripture said that the kind, he said that, but if the spirit, listen to of him who raised himself from the dead, was in you, he's telling you, he's making a point. Now, he said that he who raise Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who is where who was in you, in you. <laughs> so the question here <laughs> is my goodness does the Holy Spirit live in you oh Jesus because if you have the Holy Spirit I was telling somebody I said listen mm -hmm. this new dispensation exactly you don't need any makeup ah if you're grooming you don't need any facial stretch or whatever it is uh -huh. because the new age does not grow exactly Okay, mm -hmm. if you look at it where God actually made your body to exactly. live exactly. forever. Exactly. So if the Holy Spirit can raise Jesus from the dead mm -hmm. and you, you start seeing, seeing wrinkles on your face, exactly. that was, he can he can vitalize. Exactly. Quicken that area. Quicken it. Because that means cell, the cells there are dying. <laughs> so the Holy Spirit can quicken that wrinkles and make your face smooth. Exactly. Exactly. I wonder, I wonder how many people... This is why I love the word of God. Exactly. When I look at your Bible, I'm, I'm like... I, I see my brother here because I'm always... Anybody that studies their Bible, you can tell it is it is so dirty. Like, the in a way, God. like you can tell they eat it. By the grace they of God. eat it. By the grace of God. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? So, we have to know who we are. Exactly. You are born again. Mm -hmm. The reason you are struggling with the flesh mm -hmm. is because, number one, you don't study the word of you God. You don't study the word of God. Number two, you haven't allowed the Holy Spirit exactly to take over your life. Exactly. Continue. Amen. Now, you see, from you see, I'm using my, 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 my friend's scenario, you know, as a key study. Yeah, yeah. It's, 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 it's a just yeah. topic. It's, because how can I come to you being born again, then you are crying? Which means you, you, you don't even know. Okay. So now the question is, does a believer know? That he or she is saved. That's the question we should ask. The, the, well, the question you asked and let me answer it. Now let's open our Bibles to First John chapter five verse mm. thirteen. That is why I said I like reading the scriptures. I want the scriptures to answer the questions. This we platform, are doing... <laughs> this platform, is called Good News. Good News talk show. Exactly. The gospel means good news. Exactly. So read the gospel. Okay. Now if you read First John chapter five verse thirteen, now we want to. To be assured, mm. we want to have the assurance that we are born again. Yes. You see, somebody should not come to you and ask you whether you are born again. You don't even know what to say. Yes. Look at what he says. He said that these things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, mm. that ye may know. There is a no. There is no. 
that ye may know that you have eternal life. So the question is, have you believed? Yes, I have believed. So do I know? Yes, I know I have eternal life. That means this, this tell, look at if you if you continue that verse that, that you may know uh -huh. and then believe. Uh, thank you. So he was talking to believing unbelievers. Exactly. Because some people they are believers, but they don't actually know. They don't you need know. to move from believing you don't know. to knowing. Exactly. The, the Bible says, I think Hosea chapter 6, verse 3, he said, when we follow the Lord, then we shall know. Exactly. There has to be a knowing there on has the inside. To be a without the, You move from believing exactly. to I know God I is know. I, am I got to a point when I sit in the flight, I don't pray. Exactly. I've, from the day I got understanding, oh, Jesus. I don't sit in my car and say, oh, Father Lord, Jesus. I pray for traveling message. Oh, Why? I have oh, moved from Jesus. believing oh, to knowing Jesus. that He said, oh, I am with Jesus. you always. Oh, Jesus. Hallelujah. You see, that is why, you see, if you, if you look at the, the if you look at the, the, the letters that Paul wrote to the churches, the Ephesian church, hmm. the Colossian church, any of the churches, the prayer of the new man in Christ, my God, or the prayer of a believer who has received Christ is the prayer of knowing we call something we call epignosis. Epignosis, yeah. The epignosis mm. is a great word. The meaning is to come to a precise, precise knowledge, con concise, concise, and accurate. That's the key. Uh, thank you. So the the knowledge that, that relates with the known, that exactly, the knower. Exactly. Aish. Look at what he said. Now he said that that you may believe on mm. the name of Jesus, Jesus Christ. Now let's look at another scripture. Teach. First Corinthians chapter two verse twelve. Now we are talking about knowing that you, you are, are born again. So from today, ah. listeners, viewers, from today. First of all, if you heard the gospel message, which says that Christ died, he was buried, and he resurrected on the third day. If you had received this and you believe, then know that you are born again. Then also, he said, look at something. He said that now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know. Oh. No. Oh, my God. No. The things that are freely given, given to, to us, us by God. God. Now, the question is, what was given to you by free? Salvation. <laughs> Salvation is a free gift, gift which was given to us by God. The book of Romans chapter 6 verse 22 says that, For the wages of sin, sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life, life through Jesus, Jesus Christ our Lord. So salvation is a gift which has been given to you. Now the Bible is saying is that now you have been given a spirit though. This is very important. Mm. Because you can never have this spirit if you are not born again. My God. So that you have been given a, a spirit which is not of this world. My God. But the spirit of God to know oh that my the God. has been given to you. Hallelujah. So from today, the book mm. of Romans chapter 8 also mm. says that for the spirit also bears uh, witness with our spirit. That we are what? We are sons, sons of, of God. God. Hallelujah. So now there has to be a and knowing. Way. There has to be the assurance. You have to know that you are a born again Christian. You have been purchased by the blood oh of Christ. God. Hallelujah. Oh my God. This is very, very, very important. Oh my God. Every child of God that is listening. Every child of God that is listening. I pray that you get understanding here. Because this platform is giving for us to work on our salvation. Amen. Um, Golden Brown says, yes, I agree. And he said, uh, the same power that right, uh, raised Christ from the dead dwells in your, our mortal bodies. He said, Randy, I like your Bible studies. <laughs> yes, because I, I, bring, I bring people that knows the word and then we all can what? Steady. You understand? So I, 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 that's why I am bringing men of God that are sure of their calling. And um, he said, uh, "Yes, persuaded, uh, persuaded by the word and the promise of God." My mom said, uh, "God bless you, son, for this platform. May God give you more knowledge and wisdom." Amen. Amen. It's about knowing, knowing, Hallelujah. knowing. Hallelujah. Do you know? Do you are you know? sure? Are you sure? That you are saved. Exactly. You have to get to a point of where you can look at yourself in the mirror. Mm. You see, it starts with you. Look at yourself in the mirror. After this, ask yourself a question. Mm. Ask yourself this question. Am I saved? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Am I saved? Am I saved? Because it's, a, it's a serious question. That you went to this friend of yours and yes. he's crying. He's crying. Yes. 
crying. He's crying. Man of God, I don't, I don't want us to go ahead of ourselves because some, some this, 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 you have no idea the kind of messages I receive in my inbox. Wow. You have no idea. I was serving a certain man of God, and I mean, I served, I, you know, I serve men of God, exactly. you know, my ministry, I serve them, and one of his son inboxed me, mm. and he said. I like the way you are always joyful in the presence of God. And I want to be like you. I said, what? <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, I'm struggling with uh, masturbation. Mm. I'm struggling with this. Mm. I don't know how to be free. Mm. And I feel so depressed. I feel like I'm living a double life. Oh, my goodness. And I'm not sure whether mm. I'm saved because I have given my life to Jesus. It's like every day I go and confess my sins, but I keep doing this thing. And I, I, oh, Jesus. I guess he got to a point. That he felt like he should probably maybe just just it doesn't work. Oh God! Recently, a man a man called me. He's a white guy, and I don't know. Normally, I don't. I post my videos on you know Facebook, my worships, some of them on Facebook, uh, Instagram, and this uh, this particular time, I don't know why I, I post it on Twitter, and I got a message. Can I talk to you? Oh Jesus! He said, "I've been struggling. How come?" You? How come you, you are still the same? Like how come you you have this joy when I listen to your voice? That like there's this, there's this purity in it. There's this sincerity in it. How come I'm struggling? Like I'm getting to a point. He said, I've told Jesus to appear to me to prove to me whether He exists or not. Oh, Otherwise, Jesus. if I go to bed, me oh, I never wake up. Oh Jesus! Now this 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 is somebody oh, that has money. Have everything. Oh Jesus! But he he is confused. That, oh that, Jesus! How come if I'm saved? I am struggling with this oh, thing. Jesus. How come I'm, if I'm saved, like I have given my life, how come this 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 behavior is not leaving me? Oh, so, man of God, there's the, the youth, you you don't know, you don't know. I said the reason that this form is given to me is especially the youth, because this generation is is difficult. It's really really difficult. So, what way? In what way? And that person that is in this situation, because a lot of a lot of people are in this situation, where they feel they know they are giving their life to Jesus, but there's a, a certain habit. They can't, they can't be free. They want, they desire to give their life to Jesus totally, but there's a, a particular habit. If it's not fornication, it's either uh, stealing or gossiping about people. Or how can they totally be free from these things? How? I don't know, but is it? I mean, is it? I'm, I'm now. My countenance has changed now. Is it from what what you just told me? You see, is it viewers and listeners? You see, this is what I want us to understand today. You see, that's why when I started from the beginning, mm. I started breaking down the phrases of salvation. That's right. Once you receive Christ, you are born again. Mm -hmm. Now there is the ongoing work of the Holy, the Spirit. Holy Spirit. That is where the majority, that is where people are struggling with. Mm -hmm. But let me quote a scripture. Quote the scripture. And, 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 and let's, let's, let's look at this very well. If you read the book of um, 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verses 17, let yes. me start and break that and I will, I, will, I will lay emphasis on a particular word over there. Now, 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and 17 said that, Therefore, if any man is in Christ, mm -hmm. he is a new creation. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new, 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 new. Verse 18. Now all things are of God who has reconciled us unto himself. Now let me jump to where I want. Now look at the verse 21. It says that, For he made him who knew no sin. To be sin for us that we might become the righteousness of God in Him. Mm. Now, let me explain this. This is where I want to lay emphasis. Guys, write, the write the exactly. scriptures down. Write the scriptures down. Now, it says that for there's something we call the gift of righteousness. The gift. Now, the verse 21 says that we are righteous not because of our doings, but because of Him. But here's the thing. Now, the gift of righteousness is the ability. Or the free will to come before God without any sin consciousness mm. or any guilt. Now, the reason why I'm laying emphasis on this is that it is the strongest weapon of the enemy against the believers. Okay. Now, my friend that I went to him, mm -hmm. the friend that I went to him, 
he was I realized that he was dealing with what we call sin consciousness. Sin consciousness. You see, what I want us to understand mm. that when it comes to salvation, now salvation is the package from the beginning, as Randy said. Now, forgiveness of sin comes with salvation. Yes. Your sins has been forgiven. Now, what it happens is that once you receive him, now Christ lives in you. Now, when Christ lives in you, what he does is that he tends to govern and shape you. Okay. So now, from today, what I want us to understand is that just believe. Now, you have been given a gift of righteousness where you can come before your father without any sin consciousness or any free will. That is the first one. Yes. Now, two. Now we talk about the grace of God. Now the grace of God is a person. Mm. The grace of God is a person, and that is Christ. That's right. If you read the book of Titus chapter two verse seven, mm -hmm. it says that for the grace of God has appeared yeah, unto all men. Unto all men. Yes. Now, if you read the preceding verse, that teaching us to deny all forms of ungodliness mm. and worldly lust. That's right. So what is that? The essence of the grace of God, which is Christ, is mm. supposed to help you. Now, how does He help you? Oh my God. Now you have to submit yourself under his lordship. You have to gather around people like this. Like the way we're having Bible discussions like this. You have to now tune and be studying the word of God. Now if you receive Christ as your... So, man of God, hold on for a second. And you're giving points. And guys, those of you that are struggling in a certain area. Because this is the Bible says, I work out your salvation with trembling. Okay? I'll ask me a, 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 a certain question that comes on my mind. That a lot of people ask. Okay? So he says, number one. You have to submit. You have to submit. It's a prideful thing to try to do the word of God in the way it favors you. You will never benefit from the word. So when the word says this, you don't argue with the word. You do it because God says so. Because He's a king. It's not. This is not. This is not a. a this is not diplomatic or uh, how do I say? Uh, uh, party, no, this is a kingdom, and, and, and in the kingdom, the king's word is a rule. Exactly. So, when God says something, you don't argue and say, Ah, that one I can, I don't think I can do this one, I can only do this one. So, I learned the word submit exactly. to the word of God, exactly. and then number two, you say, well, Gather around people, gather around the people of the same, of the faith. same faith. Of the same faith. Now, let's go to the next same point, faith. keep teaching us. So, you have to gather around people. You see, a man of God, you see, when I gave my life to Christ from the beginning, mm -hmm. there's this scripture that I love so much that even up to now, it keeps ringing in my mind. This is what? First, first John chapter, I think, uh, uh, first John chapter 2 verse 6. Mm -hmm. It says that, it, it said that if we stay, so it said that if we stay, we remain in union with God, mm -hmm. then we should live just as Christ did. Mm. If we say we remain in union with God, then we should live just as Christ did. Now, I said this to, to establish a point. Now, as I was saying, Paul says something in the book of Galatians chapter 6 verse 14. Okay. Look at what he says. He said that, but God forbid that I should boast except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, mm. by whom the world has been crucified to me. This is very important. Yes. Paul is saying that the world has been crucified to him and he says that an eye to the world. Which implies that once you receive Christ, you have to love the personal savior. You have to know that you have been crucified to the world. In other words, you don't have anything to do with the world anymore. Mm. That's what you have to understand. Mm. That now, it comes to the world, you are out of it. Because there is something we call the blood. Now you are in union with Christ. My God. First Corinthians chapter 6, verse 17 said that for he that is joined to the Lord is it's one spirit. spirit. It's one spirit. So what do you do now? Now you surround yourself, as I said. Now you have to have a daily quiet time. My God. Daily fellowship with the word. Daily fellowship with the Holy Spirit. You read, you read the last chapter of, uh, 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 of, of, of uh, uh, um, Paul's second letter to the Corinth. Mm -hmm. He said that they have to be known said, by the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ mm -hmm. and the love of God. Yes. And the sweet fellowship. Yes. Fellowship means union. Mm -hmm. Fellowship means partnership yes, of union. the Holy Spirit. That's right. That, that, yeah, that's a Greek word. Fellowship with the Holy Spirit. That's right. Hallelujah. Yes. So what you have to do is that you have to desire the word of God. My God. Now, as you desire the word of God, you are, you are now having fellowship with the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Why am I saying that? The Bible makes us understand that the Holy Spirit is the author of the Bible. Mm. 
He said that for the men of God, they wrote the Bible by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. Mm. So which means that the author of the Bible is the Holy Spirit. Mm. So as you continue to read the word of God daily, then you are having fellowship with the Holy Spirit. Then as you're having fellowship with the Holy Spirit, then you are growing, then you are maturing, then you are growing in the Lord. So if you are struggling with any kind of sin, first of all, what I want you to know is that it is not by your strength, it's not by your might. Yes. That is what I want you to see. You can't do with your own strength. You cannot. If you can do with your own strength, then by now you should have been out of the situation. That's right. One, you have to understand that you have to submit yourself, one, to the help or the role of the Holy Spirit. That's where the people are, people are struggling. Exactly. Once you say the Holy Spirit, take absolute control over my life. Holy Spirit, lead me. Holy Spirit, guide me. That the Holy Spirit now begins to order your step. The Holy Spirit now begins to lead you. Oh God, I like what you're doing, um, the, the way God is using you to explain things. So when I gave my life to Jesus right now, the, the way some men of God treat the gospel to me, I almost lost my faith. Mm. Alright? Mm. Because I, when I was growing up, I didn't know anything about pu uh, puberty, you know, period. Uh -huh. Where you start, start, you start feeling sexual feeling. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You understand that? Mm -hmm. These are things we don't talk about in the in Christianity. Mm -hmm. So the man of God started teaching like, um, oh, it, 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 you you shouldn't be feel you if you are still feeling sexual desire, you have you have not been baptized by the Holy Ghost yet. So guess what? I will do seven days dry. Oh, God, take this thing out of me. God, please take, kill the last. Kill you, the last. It's not by your strength. Let, let me let me let me testify. <laughs> I, I want to testify because My believe, goodness. this is what people are struggling with. <laughs> you see, God, please, I will do seven days dry. The more I do it, the more the last, mm. the feeling, the exactly. sexual feeling exactly. was increasing. <laughs> okay. Yes. I would do 21 days. Yes. Still, the sexual feeling was yes. not going. So, I, whenever I go inside, you, you're not supposed to even have a trace of it when the Holy Ghost came. So, I'm like, okay, so which kind of the Holy Spirit have I received that's making me speak the, speak in tongues? Exactly. So, I started to see myself. Okay. Like, this thing doesn't work because, uh -huh. no, sometimes I feel like I won't have sex. Mm -hmm. This thing comes in me. Exactly. I, 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 this, this sexual feeling keeps coming back. Mm -hmm. So, I, I don't think I'm saved. Let me quote a scripture. Until I got to a point mm -hmm. that I realized that, just like we said, mm -hmm. you are made of spirit, mm -hmm. soul, and body. Exactly. The body, God created you as a sexual being. Exactly. So there is no way you can pray for God to take last out of you. It, listen, you will feel it. It is part of you. It's about, it's about submitting that area. Good. So that is the, yeah, that is, okay. Now, if you read the Bible, it says that, it says that, uh, uh, it says casting out every thought. Yes. Okay. Now the Bible says that casting out every thought. That's right. And imagination. Mm -hmm. Now when we quote that scripture, we end there, we don't continue. Mm -hmm. It says that that rises itself against, against the that. word. And, right. Exactly. So which means is that their thoughts, they will come. Mm -hmm. As for the thought, you are a human being. You live on this earth. Mm -hmm. Once you live within paper, mm -hmm. once you see paper, yes. now the thought will come. Yes. Now the Bible is saying that even as the thought comes, you have to subject it to the word of mm -hmm. God. Now the thought and the desire has come. Mm -hmm. Ask yourself, as a child of God, does it permit you to go and do that? If the desire to go and fornicate come, it's a thought. It mm -hmm. has come into your mind. What does the word of God say? Mm -hmm. That is why we said from the beginning is that you have to study the word, the of, word God. of God. So once you study the word of God and the thought of fornication comes in, the thought of smoking comes in, yes. the thought of doing certain things which are not right comes in, mm -hmm. what do you ask yourself? Ask yourself, what does the word of God say? Mm -hmm. It's like you have finished, I mean, uh, your, your school, everything is okay. Now you need a job. That's right. Now the job that you need, this man wants to sleep with you, a Christian, a believer yeah, who sits in the job. church. Now he wants to sleep with you before he gives you the job. The question is, what does the word of God say? Mm -hmm. That is why you have to study the word of God. You have to, as you are studying the word of God, now when the, the thought comes. So that's why he said that now, he says that 
casting out every thought mm -hmm. and imagination, imagination that rises it's itself against the knowledge. knowledge of God. What is the knowledge of God? The knowledge of God is the word of God. Yes. And he said that cast them out. He said that cast them out. Every thought, every thought, every thought that rises itself against the knowledge of God, yes. cast it out. Now, ma, let me read this scripture from what you were talking about. The scripture, let's open uh, Philippians chapter 1 verse 6. Philippians chapter 1 verse 6. If you have your phone, uh, if you have your Bible with me, let's go to Philippians chapter 1 verse 6. Let's look at something. You see, I, I thank God for bringing these questions. That will bring clarity. When I was coming to, 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 to the studio, I said, Lord, I pray for clarity of your word. I pray that may understanding come. I pray that may wisdom come. Right. Now I'm reading Philippians chapter 1 verse 6. Look at something now. It said that, be confident of this very thing. Mm -hmm. That he who has begun a good work. Now what is that good work? The good work is the word of salvation. Now who is he? That is God. Now look at it. Who has begun a good work in you will complete it until the day mm. of Jesus Christ. So it is that there is the ongoing work of the Holy Spirit, That's right. which is not by your strength, by the help of the of, of God. Now let me add another scripture. Mm. Now uh, you quoted uh, uh, Philippians chapter two, verses thirteen. Yes. Now let's look at Philippians chapter two, verse thirteen. And you see what happens is most of the times when we quote Philippians chapter two, verse thirteen, we forget about we, we quote Philippians chapter two, verse twelve, yes. and we forget about the text. Mm -hmm. Look at what Philippians chapter two says. Philippians chapter two, verses twelve. So that therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not as in my absence only, but now much more in my presence. Now look at what he says. Work out our splendor. Mm -hmm. Work out your salvation with fear and trembling. Yes. Now, if the Bible that you have is in front of you, mm -hmm. look at mine. If mm -hmm. you look at the Bible, now the, uh, after the trembling, there is the two dots. Yes. I don't know if it's a semicolon or the column. Uh -huh. Now, whenever you are reading the Bible, and you get and that you see that, which means that it's not, it is not a comp yes. Thank you so much. There's a continuation. Which, uh, there's a continuation. Mm -hmm. So now let's go and read the continuation in the first text. Okay. Now I said that the verse 13 said that for it is God, for it is God who works in you. That's right. Both to will and, and to, to do, do for his good pleasure. Yes. Hallelujah. Praise it doesn't God. mean that you see, you see, we see what it means it is, it is God who works you. Now let me look at you see when he said work out, the Bible did not say work for. Mm -hmm. There's a difference between work for mm -hmm. and work out. Mm -hmm. Now, where I work. I work at Kaiser. Mm -hmm. I work for the company. Mm -hmm. The company pays me. Mm -hmm. So which means that I have to put in an effort. That's right. Now for the company to pay me. Yeah. But now the scripture is said that work out. Mm -hmm. Work out. Oh. But it says that it is God who does that. Which means that you are not you, even doing anything. You cannot offer your strength. <laughs> that does not also means that you have to go and sin. That's right. You see, I always say this that you see, whenever we talk about the grace of God. The grace of God is the character of God yes. from eternity past to eternity future. That's right. You see, when we talk about the grace of God, it is who God is. Mm -hmm. God as a person is the grace of God. Mm -hmm. That is why I quoted Titus uh, 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 chapter 2 verse 11. Mm -hmm. He said that for the grace of God has appeared unto all men. Unto all men. Yes. The next was that teaching us. Mm -hmm. Notice that it is the grace of God that teaches us. Yes. It is the grace of God that helps us. Yes. It is not by our strength. Mm -hmm. It is not by our power. Yes. Because in sometimes we see we have these Bible studies that we, I mean from, uh, it's a Bible line, we do Bible studies. Yeah. And I always tell them this. You see, that you can of your strength not do anything. Mm. And I keep on asking myself, I'll run if you can testify yourself. Yeah. When you gave your life to Christ, mm -hmm. up to now, think about the number of things that you have by the grace of God, they are God in your life. Mm -hmm. Now, by the grace of God, I will not, but now, by the grace of God, I will not go and commit adultery. Oh, yeah. Because I have a wife. Yes. It's not that I, I cannot. Oh, yeah. It's not that I am far from those who do that. Mm -hmm. But it is by the grace of That's God. That's right. That's the scripture sometimes when the Bible says that do not, do not fornicate. Exactly. It means the ability to do that is there. It's inside of you. That is correct. So whenever God tells you be fruitful. Exactly. Multiply. Multiply. That means the ability is inside of oh, you. That is the power but that I said. You you <laughs> have to surrender that weakness. So I, mean, I like I, this platform is here. So that we can open up because I don't want people to. You see, it's difficult to be living double lifestyle. Exactly. 
and this generation is we are good at that. Mm -hmm. Everything's makeup. Mm -hmm. Okay? Exactly. We can put a makeup face mm -hmm. and and we don't take these things. We don't open up like what I was saying. Mm -hmm. And the man of God told me that if I'm feeling, if you are, if you are born again, you're feeling sexual feeling, mm -hmm. then you haven't received the Holy Ghost yet. Mm -hmm. Now I was questioning my Christianity because this thing keeps yeah. coming back, and I didn't know that I was in, I was in my puberty uh, uh, period time. Exactly. That I'm supposed to go through it naturally. Exactly. And this man made me fast for no reason. And God didn't take it out. I did 21 days dry fast. And you will still would die. You, you will die. Because now you, you are dependent on your own strength. That's fine. Yeah, that's what that made me feel. It's, and you cannot. And I realized. Well, I, I, you cannot. The Holy Spirit, the Bible says, He's our helper. Our helper. I like what you said. That, that is, that's a good word you said. You see, the Holy Spirit is our helper. He helps us. With our strength, we cannot. Hmm. Then again, viewers, I'm not saying that the grace of God is a lance to go and say no. 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 Because no. if truly you understand being born again, oh. if truly you understand the new man in Christ, if truly you understand your salvation, it's just beautiful. even you, you see, you see, you see, you see, the desire for those things will not even appeal to you. It, it, it's, the it's, thought will come. That's right. But you have to subject it to the word of God. That's right. The word of God that's right. It's like like when someone loves you, exactly. you cannot but want to please that person. Oh Jesus! I think we don't really understand the love of God. Exactly. That's what the problem is. Because when you understand love, exactly. the love of God. Mm. You see, love. Mm -hmm. Me, my my definition is love is when you anticipate the need of a someone exactly. and you fix it, you meet it without expecting anything in return. That's it. But today. It's not like that because we are not raising this generation like that. So God saw the need of mankind, That's right. anticipated, met that need. Mm. So when you look at him, this, yesterday I, I was asking someone a question. Said, Imagine the blood of Jesus because mm. every blood has mm. an expiration date. Oh, Jesus. The moment it is poured out. Oh, Jesus. So imagine the blood of Jesus oh, expired Jesus. in the 1960s. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. See, that is the point. You see, that is the point. You see, you see, you see. Let's dwell much on what you just said. Look at something. Now, if you look under the old covenant, if you read the book of Leviticus chapter 16, yes. Leviticus chapter 16, yes. you see, this is how it is. If you read the book of uh, the city chapter 1 up to the chapter 10, mm -hmm. now, what happened under the Old Testament were just shadows. Yes. Were just types. Mm -hmm. Were just pointing to something. So under the old covenant, this is what happens. When the children of Israel sin, mm -hmm. now, what they do is that Aaron would have to take two goats. Yes. But before Aaron even comes to the altar to make the sacrifice, yes. Aaron has to bring a ram. Okay? Yes. And the bull. Then when Aaron comes, he has to make sacrifice for himself My God. and his family. Mm. Then after he has done with the sacrifice, now he has to come to the children of Israel. Now the two goats, he has to cast a lot. All that I'm saying is in... Leviticus chapter 16 and 17 yes. for the sake of the viewers. We yes. can't read all this. Then what he does is that now he cast a lot on the goats. Now, when he cast a lot on the goats, one of the goats, all the sins of Israel will yes. be placed on that goat. That's and right. that sins will, that goat will be left into the water as a scapegoat. scapegoat. Goat. So when the scapegoat goes there, then the goat is being devoured by a beast. That's right. Now watch this. Now, the other goat, what happens is that now Aaron has to kill the goat. Mm. When he kills the goat, then he, he uses the blood of the goat. Now when he uses the blood of goat, he goes into the, uh, 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 the, the Holy of Holies. Yes. Now we have the first chamber. We have the veil. He enters into the Holy of Holies. Now in the Holy of Holies, we have the Ark of the Covenant. Mm -hmm. Now on the Ark of the Covenant, we have the Bessie Seat, yeah. which has two cherubims. Mm. Now this is what Aaron is supposed to do. Now when he goes there, he takes the blood of the goat. Now he sprinkled around the Ark of the Covenant seven times. Yes. Then God comes in, the presence of God comes in. So when he comes in, even before he goes into the Holy of Holies, he has to be tied with a chain. Yeah. Okay. Now when God accepts their sacrifice, now the whole year, what happens is that now when they go for battle, they will win their battle. When they have harvest, it's going to be bountiful. It's going to be a successful year. But in case God rejects that, what happens is that now there's going to be calamity. They will lose their battle. Their famine will go down. Now watch this. Now, that was even a shadow. That was oh even a prototype. 
And what because that was just a shadow of a bull of an animal, what happens is that now it is being done once every year. But glory be to God. Hallelujah. When Christ came, the Bible came. said that for he died on the cross and he went into the body of holies. Holy. Not with the blood of animals, yes. but he went there with his own blood, blood. and he obtained our eternal, eternal redemption. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So which means that our sins has been forgiven, our sins has been washed away by the blood of Jesus. There is no other blood than the blood of Jesus. That is what your salvation is, beloved. That is what your salvation is. That is who you are in Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Some of the comments are... Um, okay. Uh, my goodness, uh, the, the word is like a fire shut up in our bones right now. Amen. So, um, Edith says, Yes, indeed, we can never redeem ourselves. It is by the Holy Spirit, blessings, man of God. Our culture has a lot to do with our inability to talk openly about our sexuality and sexual issues, which is right. Mm -hmm. Um, some teachings, Lily said that, and uh, Lily said, God bless you too for being truthful and humble. Nah, says um, no, that's my wife. That's your wife. That's wow. my wife. She's watching she me. Powerful. God bless you. And nah. says, study the word of God to show yourself approved. That's amazing. See, uh, Pastor Frank Opoku Amoko is also watching us. Oh, man of God, thank you. Thank it's you. an thank honor to have you. Let, oh my God. Listen, guys, I, I'm so excited for what is happening here. Okay, it's okay as a as a child of God, you know, that. Don't, don't you have to study yourself exactly okay having the holy spirit does not mean that you are you are a spirit like mm -hmm. uh, uh, like you you are living in the body mm -hmm. and whatever feelings this body goes through mm -hmm. your body is going to go through it exactly it does not mean that you are not saved exactly so that's where that's where people don't get it exactly the fact that you are feeling this sexual stuff in your body does not mean that you are not saved. Now, listen, we are not saying that. <laughs> oh, go and sin. Exactly. Grace does not allow us to go and sin. Exactly. Grace is a teacher. Us it's a teacher. He to teaches you who we are. Exactly. Grace actually helps us. It because helps you. When you understand the word of God, the word of God says that stay away from fornication. Exactly. Grace is helping you to become the woman exactly. he intended, has intended oh, for you to become. Goodness. Or the man that he has intended for you to become. I read a scripture in First Corinthians. It okay. says that mm -hmm. does not nature itself teaches you. Okay. So when you look at nature mm -hmm. or let's say sexuality, mm -hmm. Man naturally exactly wants to have varieties. Oh yes. So if you look at it, sex is for procreation. Exactly. The main use of sex is for procreation. Exactly. So when you look at the animal world or animal kingdom, exactly. When the male species wants to have sex, mm -hmm. whichever animal is available, they just jump on it exactly. and do the thing quick and then leave exactly. so it's for procreation mm -hmm. they don't have a specific girlfriend what, what, whatever one is available that's what they will go for exactly and now god is saying that this thing cannot be spread all over mm -hmm. it has to be tamed it has to be controlled exactly so now look at a man adam was a man carrying genes mm. genetics mm. that's why men fornicate a lot that's right men sleep around a lot because they carry genes. Exactly. So when God says that, I want you to abstain, abstain from this immorality or sexual stuff. That's right. He is helping you to become the man he wants you to become. So that when you enter marriage, mm -hmm. that behavior will not control you. Exactly. That's right. Or when you are a woman and you enter marriage, that behavior will not control you. Exactly. So grace helps us to become exactly. what God has in, you see, that's what Bible says, seek understanding. Exactly. In all you're getting, get understanding. Oh, because yes. understanding, when no manufacturer mm -hmm. will make a, a product exactly. and, and warn you and tell you why he said don't, don't, don't. He will never explain it to you. Exactly. So when you buy an iron, he said do not use it in water. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you're like, why? Mm -hmm. How come they don't explain why? I've never seen any manufacturer the that has developed a a, a product mm -hmm. and they warn you about the products what not to you and they they explain why exactly they just tell you don't use this iron wire is plugged in mm -hmm. water exactly now if you attempt to go against why mm -hmm. you know why they said that <laughs> it's simple as that 
You know, exactly. so last week we were having Bible studies and I, I made a comment that said, God doesn't judge people. Every law in motion, there's, there's a judgment trapped inside it. Mm -hmm. So if there's a speed limit, it's 25, and you're like, oh, I'm born again. <laughs> Exactly. And you go 75, the police will pull you over. Exactly. And give you a ticket. You will pay. You have to pay. And you will look for money and pay. You exactly. can't say receive it by faith. Exactly. So that's how it is. Everything there is a, there is judgment trap. So when God says abstain from sexual immorality mm -hmm. and you keep slipping around, what, what are the consequences of doing that? Exactly. If you contract HIV or mm -hmm. STD, only mm -hmm. sexual sin, mm -hmm. that's the judgment that was inside. Exactly. God didn't judge you. Exactly. So grace helps us teaches us teaches to us. become exactly. now imagine if we get this understanding this understanding gets rooted in us exactly. we will have a wonderful community exactly so which means that is a is a christianity you know the life of the believer is a life of peace that's right you see christ does not have peace he's the peace. peace the personality of christ is peace now the question is when I talk about peace, mm. peace does not mean I have millions of money. That's right. Peace does not mean I have hundreds of thousands in my account. But the peace that I have is that I have the assurance yes. that I am born again. Mm. When I die now, I'm not going to hell. Yes. I have the assurance, have the assurance. that Christ will come again. Mm -hmm. I have that hope. You see, Paul says something in the book of 1 Corinthians. Let me read, read. Yeah, read, 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 read the scripture. Book. First Corinthians, uh, you, uh, Paul says something in First Corinthians chapter fifteen. You see, anytime I read this scripture, hmm. uh, 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 Randy, I become so happy. Hmm. You see, it gives me some kind of assurance in the faith that I find myself in. Yes. First Corinthians chapter fifteen. You see, now if you look at other other kind of, uh, let me say, I don't want to use the word religion or other things, but then you realize that, you see, the reason why uh, our faith hmm. is so unique. And it's of a much different and assurance mm. is that when Christ died, he rose again. Look at what Paul says. Uh, Anytime I read the scripture, he say, he say, I become so happy. If I'm reading 1 Corinthians chapter 15, reading from the verse, uh, let me start from the verse 40. He mm. said that, and if Christ is not risen, mm. our preaching is empty and your faith is also empty. Wow. Randy, if Christ did not resurrect from the dead, but then, then there's no point for me to even come here. <laughs> then I will not drive all the way and come here oh, yes. and come and talk to people about salvation. Then yes. there's no point. There's no but point. look at the good news. He said that. Yes. And we are found false witnesses. Then you and I will found false witnesses. We are lying. Then he said that of God. Because we have testified of God that he has raised up whom he did not. Mm. And look at the verse 17. For if the dead do not raise, then Christ is not raised. My goodness. Oh. Now look at the verse 17. And if Christ is not risen, your faith is in vain. Wow. You are still in your sins. So which implies that because when Christ died, he resurrected. Huh? Yes. That is why you and now we are born again. Oh. That is why you and now we are who we are in Christ. Oh my God. That is why you and now we can born and say that we are child of God. Yes. That is why you and now we can say that, oh my goodness, if Christ will come to the, today, we shall go with him. I'm going but to go Randy, with let me shock you with this scripture. Shock me. Do you know that the proof of Christ's resurrection is not the empty tomb? Teach me, man of God. Okay. Now, the reason why the resurrection of Christ, or the reason why the empty tomb, tomb mm -hmm. is not an evidence or a proof mm -hmm. that Christ has risen, is because when Christ resurrected from the dead, now the soldiers were bribed, were given a bribe to go and spread the propaganda. Yes. They said, go and tell the, the people that his disciples had come to take him away. Him away yes. So, at least those who were able to hear that, because don't forget, it was a command, a command. by the army commander, army commander who is now commanding his subordinates that go and spread the false news that Christ they came, and stole they the came body. to and stole the body. Good. But look at something. To prove to you that now, the proof of Christ's resurrection is the Holy Spirit. <laughs> <laughs> now let me read a scripture oh to you. God. Let's read the book of Acts chapter 2, I believe. This is getting interesting. Acts chapter 2. Now I want to tell, you see, Christ Oh my goodness. Acts chapter 2, reading from the verse. Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2. 
Oh, my glory God, be to my God. God. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. We thank you. Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2. Now, let me start reading from the verse. Uh, this is uh, 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 um, um, Peter's um, sermon. After he had said all the things, after he had started making noise, he was talking. You know, Peter can talk. <laughs> he was saying all these oh, things, and he has Peter. risen from the dead. And after he has said all these things, so let me start reading. So I'm reading Acts chapter two, verse twenty-two. Mm. But I, but I was I will jump, but it's too length. Is it still, uh, 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 the verses is too much? So I'll just right. jump and I'll read. He said that ye men of Israel, mm -hmm. hear the words: Jesus of Nazareth, a, a man approved of God among you by the miracles and wonders. And signs which God did by him in the midst of you, as you yourself also know. Look at the verse 23. Him being delivered by the uh, uh, determinant counsel of the knowledge or the foreknowledge of God, ye have taken and by the wicked hands have crucified and slain. This is uh, uh, Peter still talking. Yes. Now look at the verse 24. Whom God had raised up. Yes. Having lost the pains of death because it was not possible. That he shall be holding of it. Now look at the, the verse 32. This Jesus had God raised up, whereof we are all witnesses. Mm. Therefore, by the right of God, exalted and having received of the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit, shed for this. This is what you see. Hallelujah. Wow. So the proof that Christ, when he died, he resurrected is the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Wow. Hallelujah. Wow. That is why now, because Christ had resurrected, now we have Christ, photocopy of Christ all over the world. Wow. It is just by receiving Christ as your Lord, the personal Savior. It is by beautiful. way of salvation. This is beautiful. Hallelujah. Wow. Now, because Christ resurrected from the dead, his Holy Spirit is in everyone. Now, because of his Christ, now his work is not so easy. You see, remember that in the olden days, if you want Christ to heal you, you have to drive all the way to Jerusalem. That, that, that would have been a long thing to do. Exactly. But now, because of the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit is the proof that when Christ died, he resurrected again. I love Jesus. The proof of the Holy Spirit is that you and I, we are alive. Wow. Randy. Wow. You see, that is, that is who we are. That is all about salvation. It will shock you to know again that under the old covenant, you read the book of Exodus chapter 33. Yes. Now, 50 days after the Passover, you read the book of uh, Exodus chapter 32, reading from the verse 28. Yes. Now, uh, 50 days after the Passover, 3,000 souls died. After Moses had received the mm -hmm. law, mm -hmm. and he came back, and he met the people, the wrath of God came. Now, 3,000 souls died. Now, it will also shock you to know that after the Passover, under the new covenant, after Christ died, he came back, he stayed with his disciples for 40 days. Ten days later, Christ went. And after that, that was the day of the Pentecost. When the Holy Spirit came, 3,000 souls gave their life to Christ. Acts chapter 2, verse 41. It's amazing. It's amazing. So the proof of the resurrection of Christ, because if Christ had not risen, then we are not born again. Then we are not saved. So which means that our salvation, man of God, you see, let me shock you by saying this. Our eternal salvation did not take place on the cross. Let me explain to you. Remember when I was quoting Exodus chapter, uh, uh, Leviticus chapter 16? Yes. I said that when Aaron goes into the Holy of Holies, mm -hmm. what he does is that now the blood of the animal is yes. sprinkled around the Ark of the Covenant seven mm -hmm. times. Mm -hmm. Then God comes to the God accepted it. Yes. I said that. Now, open your Bibles to Hebrews chapter 9. Hebrews chapter 9. Exactly. Because Paul is saying that if Christ has not risen, if, if Christ, Christ has not risen, risen right, then, then our, our faith is in vain. So if you read the book of Hebrews chapter 9, are you there? Yes, I'm there. Okay. Hebrews chapter 9, and let's look at the verse 11 and 12. The verse, Hebrews chapter 9, the verse 11 and 12. It talks about the fact that he went into the Holy of Holies and he to receive our eternal ghost. Chapter 9, verses 11 and 12. I'm there. Verses 11 and 12. Look at this. So now, but Christ came as high priest of good things to come with the greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made of hands. This, this is very important. Not made of hands. That is not of his creation. So when you talk about heaven, it's not a physical thing. 
Now look at something. He said that not with the blood of goats and calves, but with his own blood, he entered into the most holy of holies once and for all, mm. having obtained our eternal redemption. It's not on the cross. God. Let me let me ask, let me quote this scripture to you. In the book of uh, John, chapter 20. After Christ had resurrected from the death. Now, when Mary came into contact, Mary Madeline, when he came to contact with, uh, with Jesus, he mm. said that. Do not touch me. Yes. For I am ascending to my father, father and, and to your father. father. Yes. By that time, he hadn't obtained our eternal That's redemption right. yet. That's right. So after he had entered and had obtained our eternal redemption, mm -hmm. now in the book of Luke, he came back. Now he went to his disciples and said, Now touch me as resurrected. Yes. So the proof of our salvation, I, I said all this thing to make a point. That the proof of, of our salvation is that when Christ died, he resurrected again. Wow. So the resurrection of Christ. It's what brings about our salvation. That's powerful. That's powerful. That's powerful. Beloved, thank you for joining us. This is Good News Talk Show with God's servant, Eric Oben. And I know all of you are enjoying the discussion about salvation. I am so blessed here. He made so many points. And I believe some of you, you took down the scriptures and also you listened to the points. Because it's very important, you know, teachers are rare in our generation you can preach but not a lot of people can teach so when you get a teacher that explains things to you you take notes you see what makes you a student of the bible is when you take notes be a disciple a disciple means a pupil or a student <laughs> okay someone that take notes when his pastor is preaching all right so don't be uh, a follower of anointing <laughs> but be a disciple a student all right he said that once you give your life to jesus christ which is true the day you give your life to jesus christ you are born again your spirit is saved but your body that's what romans chapter 12 verse 2 says what renew your mind renew your mind how you have to renew your mind with the word of God. Right. So if you can't live one second mm. without food mm. or water oh, or Jesus. oxygen, God why do you him. want to live? You see, him. your natural body needs water. Amen. It needs food and Amen. oxygen to survive. Amen. Your spirit being, which mm. is born again, mm. born anew, mm. needs the word of God. Amen. Fastings and prayer Amen. and fellowship. And fellowship. Do you understand that? So it's not enough to be born again. Otherwise, you you might drift away. The Bible says that in the in the end times there will be a falling away, and you don't become part of those people. Listen, Jesus said, anyone that touches a plow and mm. turns back is not, not fit. fit. If you're not careful, the things in this world, like I got to a point, I almost question my my, my faith. Mm. You know, if I did not study the scriptures by myself mm. and also find sincere teachers of the word hey, of God. Jesus, that is the key word. God bless you. That is the key word. Sincere, sincere. teachers word that is of the, the word of God. Exactly. Men of God that have been tried and tested. Mm. Okay? People of the kingdom. Mm. People that want to go to heaven. Mm. People that their lives are about Jesus. Those are, those are the ones you seek after. That's right. So that they can teach you. Can teach and then you too, you can make it to heaven. Because what is the essence of gaining the whole world? If Jesus can make that statement, so what, what would a man give in essence for his soul? What is the essence of gaining the whole world and losing your soul? Gain all this money, making all this money, getting all these cars, sleeping around, do whatever you want to do, and then later you didn't make it. Hallelujah. <laughs> what? The, that's the question. So if you are questioning your salvation, it's not that you're not saved. You are saved. The man of God explain to us the number one desire. There has to be a desire. You see, when 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 I started playing the piano, my, my troop mine came through vision. Okay. But when I see people like playing some skills and everything, I say, ah, how come I can play that? I had to, I had, I had to desire. Mm. 
that I want to play like this. Mm. And it was a constant, everyday, deliberate mm. practice. Mm. Okay, mm. even now that I think I know how to play a little bit, mm. if for some weeks or months I don't play, up, I don't put my hands on the piano, mm. it is required mm. for you to every day lay your hands mm. on a piano. And it's also said that it takes 10,000 hours wow. to master a craft. Wow. 10,000 hours. So sometimes when I feel like, oh, I'm just going to lead worship for 30 minutes, I can do it. And that week, I did not place my hands on the piano. I'll begin to feel that my veins are hurting mm, me. Mm. For the, it's like for the next just five minutes to ten minutes, my veins mm. start hurting me. Mm. All because I thought I know how to do. I did not practice. You see, the spirit will come upon you, but you need the body mm. to function. Mm. 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 So it's like God has promised you. You're gonna, your future is gonna be great. You know, you're gonna live this long, and you, you start driving. Rec recklessly you, you you're going to die exactly. that's how it is so you cannot say you said you are saved but you need other things that you need to do for your salvation to become what whole that was what to the measure and the stature of what christ so god expects us to get to a point where we become like jesus christ hmm. Hmm. you have made a point yes when we become like jesus christ to the measure and stature hmm. of jesus christ hmm. that's what the bible says that um, um he has made some Apostles, mm -hmm. pastors, evangelists, prophets the for, ministry. for what? The perfecting, perfecting of, of the, the saint. Now the word saint means what? Someone that is righteous. Who is so only if you are righteous, why do you need perfection? <laughs> Let me say something. <laughs> you, see, the, you, see, the, you see, the scripture says that for he gave, if you read the book of Ephesians chapter 4, yeah. verses 11 to 12. Yes. Now it says that for the perfecting of the saints. Yes. Now the Greek meaning of the word perfect me to become mature mm -hmm. mature mm -hmm. so now if we break this down for the perfecting of the sin for edify mm -hmm. is it yes. for, the, for the perfect of the sin for yes. the work of the ministry that's for right. the edifying of the body of that's Christ. right so which means that now when you receive christ as your lord and personal savior it is the responsibilities of the firefoot ministry yes the pastor to now nurture you with the word of god as they teach you the word of God, as you feed on the word of God gradually, then you become perfect. The perfect over there become mature. mature. Once you become mature, then the desire to do the work of God is so that's what we are doing that's now. How. By the grace of God, if you grow in the word of God, mm -hmm. now you realize that there is the need for me to mm -hmm. also now spread the gospel. That's how it is. Now, as you are spreading the, the gospel, then now the body of Christ has been edified. Mm -hmm. Now the body of Christ is those who are hearing us right now. That's right. Now, by the help of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. They are being impacted every now and then. That's all. So now the three with the perfecting of the saint, the work of the ministry, and the edification of the body of Christ is because you don't just start to do the work of the ministry. Yes. You have to be perfected. You have to become perfected by studying the word of God. As you study the word of God, as you grow, you know, uh, uh, by the grace of God, mm -hmm. you grow, gradually you become perfect. Now the desire for the work of God even comes. Now by the grace of God, I have the desire. That's why I came all the way to come That's and right. talk about the message. That's right. Now, Let's talk about the totality of salvation. Mm. Let's kind of summarize what All we're right. talking about. Now, if you read the book of First Peter chapter 1, yes. and I will lay emphasis on the latter part so, okay. that, so that we can summarize what we're talking okay. about. Now, First Peter chapter 1, verses 10 to 11. Mm. This is how I have I've named it. Now, I've, I've named it the totality of of salvation okay which means that the embodiment of our That's salvation right. what our salvation is all about yes now read the verse now let's start from the verse 9 so that receiving the end of your faith mm. even the salvation of your souls look at the verse 10 of which salvation the prophets have inquired and searched diligently who prophesy of the grace that should come unto you what is trying to say is that now the prophet when we talk about our salvation mm. you see the intent and the idea of god was to even save us before the foundation of this world wow let me repeat it again yes the intent of god yes is to save us before the foundation of this world mm. you read the book of titus chapter 1 verses 2 and 3 he said that for god had promised eternal life yes before time began that's right which is that our salvation was after the full knowledge mm. of god now he said that the prophet they had prophet about this. Look at the verse 11. Yes. So that searching what or what manner of time the spirit of Christ which was in them this signified. When he testified beforehand the suffering of Christ and the glory that should follow. Fully. So now in totality our salvation can be looked at this way. 
the suffering of Christ mm. and the glory. That's now, true. Christ suffered for us. He died in our stead. He who knew no sin became sin that you and I we might be saved. He wasn't supposed to have died. He wasn't supposed to have gone to the cross. But he went to the cross because of you and I. Look at the pains he went through. Isaiah chapter 53 verse 5 to 6. Bible said that for, for he was bruised. For iniquities. Ah, my goodness. Say that for the chastisement of our peace was upon him. upon him. And he said that our sins of all was laid on him. Wow. He was not supposed to have died. You, but he did it. So the Bible is said that the suffering, oh. the suffering, oh, the suffering. Think about this, viewers. Think about this, beloved. So he had to go through all this sin. He had to suffer. Now he came to fulfill a scripture. That is why John chapter 5, verse 39, verse uh, 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 40 says that. He said that ye search the scriptures, thinking ye may find eternal life. Yes. But why didn't you come? Yes, you come right. from, but why didn't you come to me? He was talking to the scribes and the Jews. Hallelujah. <laughs> so now, the suffering of Christ is because Christ had to suffer all those things. Mm. Look at the nails. Look at the tongue that was pierced. Look at the blood that was wooten up. Look at everything he went through. He wasn't supposed to have done this. Why? Because it was without sin. Now, let's talk about the glory that should follow. Now, the glory, the Greek word of, the word glory is doza. Mm -hmm. And it means authority. Yeah. It means honor. Yeah. It means power. Yes. And that power is what you have as a believer. Wow. So, Christ had to go through all these things. Christ had to suffer. Is any time I talk about this, I become a little bit emotional. Yeah. He had to go to the cross. He who knew no sin have to go through all these things. Hmm. He died in our instead. You see, he died in our stead. Yes, right. You see, he went to the shame. He, you see, he died My God. for us. He was, he had to go through a, a shameful death for hmm. us to be glorified. My God. Now, he said that the glory that should follow. Now, that is what I want to talk about uh, during this last um, segment. Mm -hmm. You see, the death of Christ on the cross. Is so that you and I can be glorified. Mm -hmm. So what I want us to understand that every believer, every child of God, the glory of God is already in you. That's you right. have already been glorified. It's not that you will be glorified. You, you have see, been. you have been. You see, any time I say, any time I get a platform, I say that whenever we are reading the Bible, we have to understand what we call gospel tenses. That's right. You say that you see, it's, it's like talking about grace. Mm -hmm. You already have grace. Mm -hmm. John chapter 1 verse 6, he said that of his fullness and have we received grace. grace upon grace. And thank you so much. He said that we are about to receive. We have mm -hmm. already received. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, because we have already received, My God. 2 Peter chapter 1 verses 2, he said that now grace and, and, and peace, he said that peace, grace and peace be, be multiplied unto you. unto you. How? Do By the knowledge. Peace. And how do you acquire the knowledge? By reading the word, the word of, God. of God. Thank you. So as you keep on studying the word of God, then the grace of God is being multiplied. It's like talking about faith. Every believer has faith. Mm -hmm. Now, what happens is that the faith that you have can either be strong or weak. That's right. Now, the book of Romans chapter 14, mm -hmm. Paul was speaking to the church in Rome and he said, some of you are weak in the weak faith. He did not say that you have weak faith. Yeah. You are weak in in the faith, you have faith, but it's weak. It's weak. That's right. Correct. So, in order for you to have a strong faith, it's true by the word of God. It's by the word of God. Exactly. So, realize that all that we are discussing is around the word, the word of God. Exactly. So, as you read the word of God, now you become persuaded. Paul said that I am persuaded that neither death mm. nor this mm. nor that shall separate me from the love of God. Why was he separate? He was separate because he knew the Holy Scriptures. Wow. Paul, you see, most of the time people say that uh, Paul doctrine. No. Paul, you see, Paul's teaching or Paul's doctrine is the revelation of the Holy Scriptures. Yeah. The Holy Scriptures are the book of Genesis mm -hmm. to Malachi. That's right. Now, when you talk about the epistles, the epistles are the revelation of the Holy Scriptures. Mm. The four Gospels, they all quoted the Old Testament. Mm. Don't forget, before Paul said all these things, now the book of the Corinthians have, have was not written. Yes. Don't even think that when Paul went into the church, to the Ephesian church and he was teaching them about it. He was teaching from the Old, Old Testament Bible. But the difference is that he had a revelation. All that was written under the Old, uh, the Old Testament, they were shadows. They were time. Mm. They were, you see, they were shadows. They, they, they were things, you know, an example like this, like the tabernacle that I said. A tabernacle is, 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 is a figure of, 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 of a heavenly description. 
Mm. Hallelujah. So this is what we need to understand. So the glory that should follow is that when Christ died and he resurrected. Now, these are the three, three things that I want to talk about. Now, the resurrection of Christ is one. Satan was, de was defeated. Was defeated. That is, that is one we need to understand. Yes. The resurrection of Christ on the dead broke down every chains and every kind of bondage of every believer. Yes. So if you are a believer and you are hearing me right now, you are not under the bondage of Satan anymore. All powers have been broken. Broken. The book of really? Colossians says that we have been translated from the kingdom of darkness into his dear light. Mm -hmm. There has been a switch of identity. Yes. You are now not under the domain of Satan yes. anymore. Yes. Number two, it is also the creation of the new man in Christ. Mm. Because if Christ had not resurrected you and now, we are not born again. That's right. So the resurrection of Christ or the glory that should follow is that it is the formation of the new man in Christ. Wow. wow. One, the Satan's dominion has been broken. Two, the creation of the new man. Three, you have the authority and the power. My God. That is who you are in, 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 in the country. glory that you follow. The glory that you see that the part that I love so much. The suffering of Christ and the glory. The glory is that now Christ lives in you. Wow. So that greater is he that lives in me than he that is in the world. One day, uh, Randy, I was driving with my wife to church. And she had this dream. And she was thinking about a dream. She was so down. And I asked her this question. I said, Mommy, are you born again? She said, yes. Do you believe that Christ lives in you? She said, yes. Okay. If you believe that, that this is the meaning. Anytime the enemy sees you, he doesn't see you, he sees Christ. Yes. Why am I saying this? The book of 1 John chapter 4, verse 17. He said that just as Christ, Christ is. So are we in this world? Thank you so much. Randy. So are we on this end? Mm -hmm. So which means that we are representative of Christ on this world. That's right. So when the enemy sees us, he doesn't see me as Eric. He doesn't see you as Randy. That's right. He doesn't see whoever is listening to us mm -hmm. right now, but he sees Christ. That's right. And when he sees Christ, then he remembers what Christ did to him on the cross. Mm -hmm. When he make a public ridicule, Colossians chapter 2 verse 15, <laughs> then therefore he has disarmed Disabled, disabled, exactly. That is what Christ did to him. God. That. So, if you know the glory that should follow us, you being uh, born again in Christ, now you begin to walk with peace. Hallelujah! Mm. That is the glory that, that that is what we should understand. You see, that is who you have to know you are. But these things would not have materialized. If Christ had, had, uh, did not die and resurrect from wow. God bless you, man of God. Oh, yeah. God bless you, man of God. Hey, guys. That is God's servant, Evangelist Obey. I think one day we have to talk about the authority of the believer. Oh, there is a good topic. Because I can get a topic Oh, right yes. <laughs> the topic has become so wonderful and so amazing. Salvation. You are saved as a child of God already. Oh my but there is an ongoing process. Mm. There is a reason why you are called human being. Mm. Not human being. Mm. Being is something that is that is work in the progress. That's right. Being is someone that has been here and is dead and gone. Mm. So if you are a human being, that means you are a work at progress. Mm. You are still being, you keep on living, that's what God is working on you. Mm. So the fact that you made some mistakes, that don't mean that the grace of God oh, cannot reach out to you. Oh, don't let the devil play with your mind and say that you have some cause to settle with God. Mm. No child will be afraid to go to their father. Oh, oh goodness. One time, Prophet Hubert told me something. He said his son did something and the child was so scared oh. to come to him. And he and his wife were dead. He's like, I haven't seen Junior today. And the child thought that what he has done, his father is disappointed. That father doesn't even know. Goodness. He is saying, I have missed my son today. He has not come to me. My goodness. The mother said he's at the room thinking that if you find out what he has done, you're going to be disappointed. My goodness. If you understand, he said, Now when the child came to him, oh, Jesus. Oh, when the child Jesus. came to him, oh, Jesus. And he said, What, what is it that you are worried about? Oh, Jesus. He said, I pass on my exam, so I felt like I'm going to be disappointed. Oh, Jesus. Said, Junior, no matter what you do. Oh, God. Glory be to God. God bless you. God bless you. 
Oh, Listen, Jesus. he said, after that, my son didn't think that, okay, now that I've done this, it's my room store for me. And the things my dad bought for me are this store for me. He didn't think that I, I, I've, I've made this mistake. Can I still go and sleep on my bed? He went in without any permission. You don't understand the love of God. You don't understand the love of God. That I may know. The, 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 the eyes. Oh, Jesus. The, the day you'll be able to understand the oh, love of God, Jesus. you will know the grace of God. Oh, Jesus. Into to any deeper darkness oh, Jesus. and fish you out. Oh, Jesus. If you were the only person on this earth, Jesus was to have come and died. Oh, glory be to God. Let me tell you something. Jesus died for real. Oh, he died for you and I because Amen. we are sinners. The Bible says, while we were yet sinners, Christ oh, yes. died for us. Amen. Yes, you are saved, but the man of God is teaching us that, yeah, the Father you are saved does not mean that you should sit down. Every time that is born, need to drink milk. They suck the mother's milk. And when they develop teeth, they have to try some certain kind of meal. So there is a, a, a milk level, and there is a meat level, and then we go to bones level. So you still have to grow in the things of God, my beloved. The reason you are struggling in that area is because you have not desire the sincere milk of God. You are listening to so many voices. A lot of God's children are listening to so many men of God, so they are confused about their salvation. My this one is saying this. This one is saying this. What is Jesus saying? You see, every day, compare the word to what Jesus said. Paul is not Jesus Christ. I will read Paul, but Paul is not Jesus Christ. What did Jesus Christ say? That's the question you should ask. So you need to desire the sincere milk of God's word. Steady, steady the word of God. Don't wake up a day without diving into the word of God. Some of you, your Bibles are under your pillows. And then when you're sleeping, you sleep on the Bible. You think there is power in that Bible? The Bible is effective when it is on your lips. Jesus defeated the, the devil not by holding the Bible. It came out of his mouth. He said, it is written. The devil cannot stand a child of God who knows who he is. The reason Satan is always battling you everywhere is because you don't know who you are. The man of God made, that, made us understand that there is a potent power locked inside of each child of every child of God. I remember when I used to go to Ghana. Every day I'm going to Ghana, I'm always fasting and praying oh, because Jesus. I'm thinking somebody's going to kill me. Oh, Jesus. I will fast seven days. Lord, make my hands a fire. Let every part of my being be full of fire so that if any witch look at me, they can look at me. I was suffering for no reason. No good father will make a child suffer stuff before they give them what they're looking for. It's not written anywhere in the Bible. Jesus said, even if you who are wicked and wicked oh. and bad and racing, if your children ask you for good things, you will give them. How much more give, will not give the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit is the power of God. The creation of everything. God chooses the Holy Spirit to create everything. What makes God who it is is already locked inside of you. Oh, Jesus. 1 John 4, 4 said that, Beloved, you have overcome the world because greater is He that lives in you than He that is in the world. You don't know who you are. That is why the devil is... You see, I tell people that Satan does not bother those who know who they are. You are saved. You are struggling that area because you don't want to submit to the word of God. Number two, you grow by fastings and prayers. I would say Paul said, doing fastings and prayers. Every eating child of God, you can overcome the flesh. Don't be eating. I would say that the kingdom of God is not about eating every day. It's about fasting and prayer and joy in the Holy Ghost. You need to suppress the body because they are at war every day. So make sure you grow all the time. Don't give up. Don't, don't be eating all the time. Don't be eating all the time. Grow all the time. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? So we grow by what? Studying the word of God. The Bible says, well, receive the engrafted word of God, which is able to save your soul. Submit to the word of God. When the word of God says something, don't argue with it. Submit to the word of God. And then fellowship with... People like like minded faith people, those that want to go to heaven, hang around them. If the friends you're hanging out with are not serious about their salvation, don't joke with yours. 
Do you understand what I'm trying to say? So, man of God, how can someone be born again in the next five minutes? That's very good. They say, if you read the book of John chapter 16, now let's look at the practicality of one becoming born again. And it's all by the work of the Holy Spirit. If you look at John chapter 16, read it from the verse 8. There's this scripture which we all quote, but let's look at the meaning in context. Mm. The reason why I use the word in context is sometimes we quote the Bible out of context. And uh, when your understanding of the scripture is wrong, then your practice is also wrong. When your understanding of the scripture is wrong, then your practice is also wrong. So let's look at John chapter 16 verse 8. Mm. If we start from the verse 14, he was saying so many things. Christ was preparing his disciples about uh, his going to the cross and all this. So look at what he said. Now he says that, nevertheless, I okay, let me start from the from the verse uh from verse uh let's say five. But now I go away to him who sent me, and none of you ask me, Where are you going? But because I have said this things to you, sorrow has filled your heart. Look at verse 7. Mm. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. Mm. But if I depart, I will send him to you. Look at verse 8. That, the verse 8 is what I want. So that, and when he has come, he will convict the world of sin. Mm. Now look at this. Of sin, underline sin in your Bible. And of righteousness, underline righteousness in the Bible. Yes. And of judgment. Look at the three things. Underline those things in your Bible. Hallelujah. Now, the first one, it says that he will, now, the, 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 it says that he will convict. Convict. Now, in other versions of the Bible, it says that reproves. Reproves. Now, the Greek word for reproves is elenko. Mm -hmm. E L E N C O. Mm -hmm. E L E N C O. Yes. In other words, it says that to reproves, mm -hmm. which means to convince someone of the truth. Mm. To convince someone of the truth. Yes. So Christ is saying that it is advantage for him to go. So that when he goes, now the Holy Spirit can come. Now when the Holy Spirit comes, the role of the Holy Spirit is to now reprove us. Yes. So it means that you will now convince us of the truth. Not any other truth. Not any other message. Yeah. But this, the genesis of this start after you have heard the gospel. Yes. Now, it talks out of the sin. Now, which means that now the Holy Spirit now will now convince you of the truth that sin is not good. That is one. That's right. Now, he said that he also now convinces us or wants us of judgment. That's right. Now, the Holy Spirit now will now bring you to attention that now, if you don't receive Christ as a Lord and personal Savior, when you die, you go to hell. That's right. That is very true. It's true. Now, after that, too, the Holy Spirit will also now convince you to know that you cannot be close to any other person who is righteous than Christ. That's right. Because Christ is the righteous. Person. That's right. Hallelujah. Ah. So we're talking about three things. Mm -hmm. Sin. Now the Holy Spirit now convinces us of our sin. That's right. One, two, he and now he convinces us of the fact that Christ is the only person that will can bring about our salvation. Mm -hmm. Now three, he wants us. He wants us. He wants us of judgment. Right. So after you have heard the gospel message, and what is the gospel message that Christ died he was buried on the third day he was resurrected again wow. that is the complete message wow. and now as i read again first peter chapter 1 verses 9 to 11 it talks about the suffering of christ and, and the, the glory, glory that should yes. follow so if you hear this message and you give your life to christ then you are born again you see the gospel message is a message of good tidings it's a message of peace Mm. Uh, 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 Proverbs chapter 25 is 25. Solomon said that he said that the word of God is like somebody who is thirsty. He said the good news is yes. like somebody who is thirsty, thirsty. and has received Save water. water. That's which why means, I got the good news. Uh, uh, thank you. Yeah. So which means that once you hear the good news 
it's supposed to bring peace unto you. That's right. A good news does not scare you. That's right. A good news does not put you into fear. That's right. The reason I'm laying emphasis on this is that most of the time people come to church and they say they have received Christ as a Lord and personal Savior. I said, what message was preached for you to receive Christ as a Lord and personal Savior? Were you scared that you, uh, something will frighten you? No. A good news is a news of good tidings. That's right. So once you hear this good news and you believe, you are born again. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. Thank you so much, man of God. Listen, beloved. Let me tell you something. This song. This song makes me cry every day. This song makes me cry every day. This is the song that when I when, 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 when I pull uh, when I play, this is the song that I'm talking about. When I play this song, it puts me to prayer mode. Hmm. That's the same Jesus that we are talking about right now. This loving, graceful, merciful Jesus Christ that came to this world, and a woman with an issue of blood oh. will touch this Jesus and be healed. The same Jesus that if you don't give your life to him, you're going to see the other side of him. And it's very true. And it's true that people don't want to believe it. I was one time meditating and God told me that people always think that I'm merciful. He told me, pick up that coin. So I picked a coin from my table. He said, how many sides do you see? I see, I see two sides. He said, the same way. I have two sides. My grace, my mercies, my kindness, they all end here on this earth. If you don't receive them now, and anything happens to your life, and your life is over, you will see the judgment side of me. And that will be too late. You see, the, the times of playing games with our lives are over. You see, you, you, you can't be lukewarm. You, you have to make a choice. You have to make a choice. You, you can't be lukewarm. So I like what you said. That the Holy Spirit will convince you and let you know that Jesus died and rose from the dead. And sick and you will make you understand that if you don't believe in him, it's a warning that you will end up in hell. That's what I said. The judgment. The judgment. Ah, judgment. That is why I'm explaining that when we talk about grace, 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 grace ends here on this earth. Okay, grace ends here on this earth. When you take the coin, the two sides of the coin. So God's mercy will always keep pe pe pursuing you all the time, no matter what you do, because you are still on this earth, and there is nothing that anybody has done on this earth that the, that is bigger than the blood of Jesus. There is no sin that you have committed that is bigger than the, so far as you are alive, oh, Jesus. there is a room for you at the oh, cross. Jesus. Oh, Jesus. My sister, my brother, I don't care what you have done. This, this Corinthians book that we are reading, the author of that Corinthian was a murderer. Hmm. Paul killed Christians, okay, and God didn't condemn him. God saved him. Who wrote the Pentateuch? Moses. He was a murderer. People say he's a murderer. He's supposed to die. He doesn't, he doesn't deserve to, to, to live. And God says, no, 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 no. I created him. Inside of him are these books. Grace saved Moses' life. And now we have Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. You are reading it. If that man had died, if Paul had died, who was going to write all this? Uh, 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 um, two texts of the New Testament. Yeah. So it doesn't matter what you have done, grace of God. Man, go, let me it's coming. Scripture for you. See, today we are we, we are being moved by the by the Holy Spirit. You see, let me find the scripture. I love what you are saying. You see, it is it is the grace of God. Yes. The book of um, Ephesians chapter two said, "For by grace are ye saved yes. through faith." You see, I love what you are talking about, and see what Paul said in the book of First Corinthians. I'm sorry, First Timothy. Mm -hmm. First Timothy is a, is a letter which was written to uh, Timothy, who was a pastor in the church of the Ephesian church. Look at what he said. First Timothy chapter one, mm -hmm. reading from the verse 
4. Look at what he said. From the what you are saying. Yes. He said that, and I turn Christ Jesus, our Lord, who has enabled me, mm. because he counted me faithful. Yes. Putting me into the ministry. Wow. Look at the verse 13. So that although I was formerly a blasphemer, mm. a persecutor, persecutor, an insolent man, yes, but I have obtained mercy. Oh, because I did it ignorantly in unbelief. Mm. And the grace of God was exceedingly abundant with faith and love, which I in Christ Jesus, my goodness. Beloved, wherever you are, you see, the only sin that the blood of Jesus Christ could not wash mm. is the sin of unbelief. Mm. I repeat it again. The only sin that the blood of Christ cannot wash away is the sin of unbelief. Yes. It's not to believe. That is why if you don't receive him as the Lord and personal Savior, you will die and go to hell. Mm. That is the only sin, sin of unbelief. That the blood of Christ cannot. So the question is, what sin is it that Christ cannot forgive you? Mm. Are you a murderer? Are you a fornicator? Are you somebody who commits adultery? Just name them. Because you see, man of God, when we talk about sin, there's always the bracket of adultery, adultery, murder. murder. Those are the sins that yes. we think about. But the book of Romans, chapter 14, verse 23. He said that if you do something out of faith, it's a sin. It's a sin. So the Bible said that if the Lord should mark iniquity, who can stand? That is why we are saying in the book of Colossians chapter 2 verse 6. See that for just as you have received him, yes. walk in him. How did you receive Christ? Mm. You receive him by grace. Mm. Therefore, walk with him walk by with grace. Him. Walk with him. Believe in him and putting yourself under the lordship of the Holy Spirit wow. to guide you. To lead you to order your steps. Beloved, the reason why we have gathered this afternoon is because of you. It was by a divine appointment that by this time you will come and we shall share the gospel. This is not preaching, this is teaching. I have found a good friend who loves the word of God as I do. That is why he has a platform. God has given unto him a platform where you and I we can come and study the word of God. You remember what he said? He said we shall have another discussion again about what the authority of a believer and god willing next next month i guess i have another talk show with valerie on the uh, on, on 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 podcast or uh, the podcast inside uh, as a platform and the gospel message is also going to be shared about our salvation mm. seek the lord open up give yourself to christ and one more thing before we bring this to an end there are certain blessings which are automatic. I've called it instant blessings mm. that one has. Immediately you receive Christ as a Lord of personal Savior. They are instant. They are instant. They are right and dead. You, you don't have to. You see, this blessing, you don't pray for them. Yes. You see, this blessings, you don't, you, you, don't, you, don't, you don't pray for them. It's like instant. Mm -hmm. One of them is your sins are forgiven. Mm. If you receive Christ as a Lord of personal Savior, I just want you to write this down. Your sins are forgiven. They are forgiven. You have been reconciled to God. You have been adapted. You are not adapted child of God. Mm. You have been redeemed. You have received grace. John chapter 1 verse 16. Of his fullness have you received grace. You have been justified. That's right. The book of Romans chapter 5 verse 1 and 2. The resurrection of Christ now justify us. You have been positioned at God's right hand in heavenly places. You have the spirit life of Christ in you. You have been sealed with the Holy Spirit. You have the power of attorney to use the name of Jesus Christ. The book of Mark chapter 16 verse 17 to 18. He told the disciples, go and preach the gospel. After you've gone to preach the gospel, he said that in my name, in my name, in my name you shall cast, cast out the, the, the demons. Beloved, you have the right and authority to use the name of Jesus. Wow. The book of John chapter 14 verse 13 to 14. said that when you are praying, in my name, demand. The word as over there means to demand. Whatever you demand, you see the name of Jesus, it shall be established. Finally, you are a child of God. You are a child of I God. love what Randy said from the beginning. Mm. That I have a child. I have, I have three children. 
I don't think that none of my children, uh, when, 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 when they disobey the rules of the house, I will tell them to go and sleep outside. I don't think I will starve my children if they disobey. I will give them food. I will even bring them to me. And I'll, I'll also even make sure that they are okay. That's right. It's because I love them. Wow. God bless you. Thank you so much, my God. You see, beloved, if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior, that's why the platform is here. You see, all these things that we are talking about, all the authority, the man of God is sharing, the blessings, they are for children of God. Bible says that in the Garden of Eden, God told the snake that from today, because of what you have done, your food is going to be the dust of the ground. There's the food of the snake is to eat the dust. So Satan has been eating the snake. The devil is eating dust. Your food shall be what the dust of the ground. Man was made from the dust of the ground. That's why Jesus says you must be born again. Otherwise, you are the devil's food. So we are preaching this that he is graceful, he is faithful, he is merciful. But trust me, when your life on this earth is over, you will meet the other side of Jesus Christ. The judgment seat of Christ where every man will appear. So if all that we are saying, you have not given your life to Jesus Christ. You are not going to die and go and meet those of you that are saying, hey, God is God is a loving God. There is no way God is going to. Yes, the loving side of God ends on this earth. He has two sides, a lamb side and a lion side. Therefore, if you don't know Jesus Christ as your, as your personal Lord and Savior, there is no life without Jesus Christ. Life revolves around Jesus Christ. The question that the man of God began with, that his friend said he doesn't know if he's truly born again. Are you struggling? You don't know. Are you certain about your salvation? That if you die today, you will make it to heaven. If you are not sure, then there is a question mark with your salvation. And that is why you must be born again. A born again is a must. Don't joke and say God is merciful because his mercies, his graces, his, his, his kindness, they end on this earth. Every coin has a two sides. The judgment side is after your life is over here, you meet Jesus Christ. Let me tell you, whenever anybody dies, the first place they go to is court. You are going to go to court. You're going to stand before Jesus Christ and give account to what you did with your life. So if you're not sure, if you're not sure, if this question scares you, many people see visions about the rapture and their heart is beating. If you are scared, the Bible says, Faithful is that servant whom his master will come and find, diligently and faithfully doing what he asks him to do. So if you're doing what your master asks you to do, you're not afraid of his return. But the one that is not doing the work, you are you are scared because you are you don't know. The Bible says, if we know when he will come. If the if 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 the if the housekeeper knew when the thief is going to come and rob the house, he would have put his house in order. If you don't know Jesus Christ, if you are not certain about your salvation, we have preached about salvation, we have taught about salvation. So many principles and points have been given. If you are not certain, just like the man said, I don't know if I'm born again or not. Then this is the time. Listen, all of us need Jesus Christ. Everybody needs Jesus Christ. Without Jesus, your title will not give you access to heaven. Imagine if we were all supposed to go to school and graduate before we enter heaven. I don't think we would have made it. Imagine all of us are supposed to, imagine only rich people have access to go to heaven. I don't think I would have made it. Imagine if we're supposed to be white to enter heaven. My color wouldn't have allowed me. Imagine if we're supposed to be black and enter heaven. Some people wouldn't have made it. But God made it so fair that you only need to believe. You don't need degree to enter heaven. You don't need any passport to enter heaven. All you need is believe that Jesus Christ is the son of the living God. He died for your sins. Accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior. Everything points that we are at the end time. You see, you don't travel, so you don't know what's happening. Prophecies are happening behind closed
close your door, you have no idea. And if you're a student of the Bible, you will put your life in check. Before you go to bed, who, who, who told you that you are guaranteed to wake up the next day? But you have plans that tomorrow I'm going here. Who told you? The Bible says, oh, foolish person. Say, if God permits, I will do this tomorrow. But we say, oh, tomorrow I will go here. Who told you that tomorrow you are allowed to wake up? Oh. So, you want to give your life to Jesus Christ? I want you to say this prayer. You are not certain about your salvation. It's a beautiful thing to give your life to Jesus Christ. The places that you are struggling with, surrender them to Him. He will help you. you he will help you. Any area you feel weak, maybe sometimes you, you'd like talking about people. That's your weakness. Some of you, it's about the fleshly things. Some of you, you that everybody has a weakness. The fact that you sin differently than somebody does not mean what you're doing is not a sin. It's a sin. Every sin is a sin. That's why we need Jesus Christ. Therefore, I want you to say this prayer with me. My sister, become sure of your salvation. That you know that when Jesus comes, there is this joy in you that you will make it. Brother, become sure of your salvation. That when Jesus appears today, you will make it. No doubt, no shadow of doubt that you will make it. Bible said there is a no. Don't that you will make no. That you have eternal life. Mm. Are you? Do you know it? Mm. Do you know? Mm. Have you come to the epignosis level? Oh. A, a, an accurate, accurate, concise, precise knowledge that you know and you know that when Jesus comes, you will make it. If you're if you're not that person, then say this prayer after me. I don't cry. Oh Lord Jesus Christ. I am a sinner. Listen, you have to openly admit. I, I made that confession one day. I, I Listen, I tell God I'm a sinner. Don't let your gifts deceive you. Don't let whatever you're doing deceive you. We are not taking our gifts to heaven. It's by grace we are entering heaven. That's why you need Jesus' grace. So Jesus, I need your mercies. I admit that I'm a sinner. I need your mercies. Lord, cleanse me. Lord, wash me by your blood. Sanctify me. Sanctify me by your blood. I know and believe that you died for me and my sins. And that on the third day, God raised you from the dead. Come into my life and be Lord of my life. Jesus, wash me from all uncleanness. Jesus, wash me from all unrighteousness. I don't want to die and go to hell. Save me by your grace. Forgive me of all my wrongs, Lord. Accept me as your son. Accept me as your daughter. And bring me close to you. I open myself for the Holy Spirit to come and fill me right now. Precious Holy Spirit, help me to live righteously. Help me to live right for Jesus Christ. Give me the grace to surrender the areas that I'm weak at. To live and yield myself for the master's use. Please, Jesus, write this name in the book of life. In your book of life, write Randy as a man. Write this name. Mercy your name today. Write this name in your book of life. I am registering my name in your book of life. So that in the last day, when you do a roll call, I will answer when you call me. The Bible says, whosoever's name that was not found in the book of life will be cast into the lake of fire. So mercy your name say, Jesus. Write my name in the book of my name is Randy Adjeman. Mention your name and say today I register my name in the book of life. Lord, forgive me. If you pray this simple prayer, I want to put it to you that you are a child of God. The Lord has forgiven everything that you have done. Your sins have been forgiven. There's a brand new life for you. You don't belong to the devil. You belong to God the Father. You are a child, a bona fide child of God. Who 
now have access and boldness to come to the throne room of God and obtain mercy in times of trouble. I will encourage you to find a Bible believing church. You don't know a church, inbox me, inbox me after this, inbox me. I will show you a Bible believing church where you can go so that you can be taught and grow in the things of God. you for joining us. We had a wonderful time with God's servant Eric Obey. Follow him. Follow him. Subscribe to his channel on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, every platform. The word and the spirit. You, you heard the, the sound teaching. Bible based. Bible based. Anyone that doesn't believe that Jesus Christ is risen. It's a curse. It's a, it's a false teacher. Man of God, God bless you. We appreciate you for coming to Good News Talk Show. Like I said, we are going to discuss another topic. Oh, my God. If you are blessed, make sure you like this page. Like the page. It's called Good News Talk Show. Good News Talk TV. Like the page. And then go and subscribe to our channel on YouTube, Good News Talk Show, Good News Studios TV. Actually, it's on YouTube, Good News Studios TV. The same name you see on Facebook is the same name you will find on Instagram and then on YouTube. Subscribe because every video that every podcast we have here, we, we put them on the YouTube. So in case you miss us here, when you are home, you can listen. Keep listening to the word of God. Faith comes by hearing and hearing. It's not one time. Hearing and hearing. Hearing and hearing. When I come to church, my pastor teaches us, I go back and I go over it. Sometimes I record and when I'm, I'm at work, I'm listening. I'm listening. Sometimes I grow more when I listen second times. Do you know that every podcast I have here, I go home and I I have time and listen to it again because I want to grow. I don't... I, listen, the day you think you have arrived, you, you will become a dwarf. So God bless all of you. My name is Randy Ajeman. I am your host on Good News Talk Show. On Good News Talk TV. My guest today was evangelist, God's servant, Eric Obey. God bless you. You have blessed my life today. And I know somebody has been blessed. God has been blessed. A lot of people have been blessed. And God is happy because we are here to win souls. Do you have any last words before we cut off? That's right. Well, my last words, I uh, just want to say a big thank you to my followers, uh, the viewers, uh, followers of Word and Spirit. If you go to um, YouTube, I have so many teachings. Uh, I'm teaching a series on the new man in Christ, your true identity in Christ. I've done about 25 episodes now, and I'm still going because I believe that salvation is very broad. Even what we discuss right here, it's not even enough. We are not done. Salvation, I, I, I always tell people that it needs a whole camp of one week or a month of salvation because we need to go deeper, deeper with so many scriptures mm. to explain what our salvation is. And I want to thank all my viewers, you are those who are following me. Yeah, I always have a teaching, uh, um, 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 teaching sermon. Let me put it this way: yes. or a teaching uh, uh, studies. Let me put that way. Yeah, uh, on Wednesday, on, on Wednesday with Alpha C Multimedia, mm. I go there every Wednesday, three p.m. Um, Eastern Standard Time. You can join me on Facebook. Uh, and you can follow some of the teachings that by the grace of God, we are all learning, by the grace of God, yes. God is helping us uh, to know. I want to say a very big thank you to my one and only wife, now or kindly or being. I want to thank you so much for your support. It is by the support of my wife that I've been able to come here. That's right. By now, she should have probably been at home. Oh. But now she thank said, you. I will take care of the thank children. You. Go and preach thank the gospel. Thank you so much. I want to say a very, a very big thank you. Thank you to my pastor, Reverend uh, William Agbali of uh, Kodesh Family Church wow. in Alexandra Springfield. Wow. In Springfield. Uh, on just this Sunday, we That's are right. having great invitation. Mm. We are inviting everybody. Come and let us fellowship together. That's right. Come and let us all study the word of God. That's right. And I also want to say a very big thank you 
you to our bishop, uh, Bishop Dark Ward Mills, mm. and our resident overseer of the whole North America, mm. uh, Apostle Joel. I am who I am because of the sound teaching wow. that I have Amazing. from the church. Amazing. I want to say very, and I want to say very thank you to all the church members. Wow. I can't mention all of wow. you, but by your support, wow. it is by the grace of wow. God. And my three beautiful children. Wow. I have one boy. Mm. His name is Jessima, mm. and I also have twins. Mm. I said, buy one, get one free. Wow. So, Jessamel, Jicolia, and Jokoram, thank you so much, and God bless you. Wow, thank, thank, you, so thank, you, for, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. For inviting me. Oh, it's a pleasure. It's a pleasure to have you here, man of God. You have been a blessing. Jesus. Guys, God bless all of you. Tomorrow evening, I'm going to have my pastor, Pastor Frank Opuku Amuako. There's a serious topic we're going to discuss here. Tomorrow evening, around 5 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So make sure you watch this page. That's why I said like the page and then hit that notification button so that when we come live, you don't miss it. Thank you so much, Pastor Frank. You're such a wonderful leader. Wonderful father. I really, really appreciate you. Today, if you can tell, we have, we have a smooth internet it all because of pastor frank my pastor this sunday we are having deliverance service it's a worship and it's going to be powerful address is 8785 commerce court manassas virginia 20110 Sweet 201. You want to make it here. The service starts at 10 a.m. I will be leading the worship and I've been preparing this whole week because I want God to use me. I want to be relevant in the hands of God. I want God to use me so that others can be blessed. Come for sound teaching, sound teaching, dynamic. Kingdom coded worship, an atmosphere that when you get out of it, you know that everything that came with you has left. Once again, the address is 8785 Commerce Scott, Manassas, Virginia 20110. 201. I will be here. Pastor Frank Opokoma will be here. The name of the church is Destiny Life. Now it's Kiss. Destiny Church. We are still updating the website information. So in case you look for the address and give you Destiny Life, don't worry. It's going to bring you to the same place. And I'm, be, I'm going to be here leading the worship, the, the, the people of God into the room, the throne room of God. All this beautiful worship that is playing now on my YouTube channel is Randy Ajeman on YouTube. Subscribe to this channel and you are going to encounter dynamic worship that has never happened before. I'm receiving so many testimonies and it humbles me that God is working. God bless all of you until we meet again. Continue to listen to Good News Talk Show. Continue to watch this page. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you missed today's show, you will find it on YouTube later. All the previous shows, you're going to find them on YouTube. We are uploading them all there. So go subscribe to Good News Studios TV on YouTube. May God bless you. Stay blessed and work on your salvation. Stay close to God. Don't lose your salvation. My name is Randy Adi. I will see you next time. God bless you. Bye-bye. There is a cry in my heart that my words cannot express. There is a yearning in my spirit that I cannot communicate. Spirit, hear the voice my heart and pray to the Father. Spirit, pray. There is a place 
deep in the world there is a place that my heart loves for it's calling me to come up there are realms of the spirit different dimensions are beginning on me 